As you may or may not know, my wife and I just got back from Vegas. It was a great trip. We ate, we drank, we had a blast. But then we got home and looked at the credit card, and uh, I gotta say, it doesn't matter how much fun you're having, 25 bucks for a drink is a ripoff. Frickin' Vegas. I hate getting ripped off, and so do the lads over at Harry's. They spent years watching the razor blade companies rip people off and said, No more! Not all heroes wear capes, my friends, and they want to prove that they're legit by offering you hot dogs a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. I've been telling you about them for months, and I'm genuinely proud to have Harry's as a sponsor of this show. I wasn't kidding. The plastic, futuristic-looking crap razors you get at the store are overpriced, and they're poor quality. Harry's blades are crisp, clean, and classy. They're the kind of razor you'd expect your grandpa to have on his bathroom counter. And most importantly, they work. Shave after shave, they're so smooth, they're precise. I used to go through the crappy store blades all the time, but Harry's are built to last. And they're not just better quality than the other names, they're more affordable. And they deliver. Just set your schedule, and for as little as two bucks, new blades, shaving creams, lotions, everything you need, right to your door when you need it. I genuinely cannot think of a reason not to try Harry's. And I'm not just saying this because they're sponsors. They're the best shaving supplies I've ever used. Try them out. And if you're not happy, your shave's on them. And unlike the other subscriptions, they're really easy to cancel if you want to, too, which is a nice bonus, but... Believe me, you're, you're not going to want to cancel. Getting ripped off isn't funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. That's harrys.com slash RTG for a $3 trial set. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Remember the Game. It is my retro gaming podcast where every week a buddy of mine and I sit down and we geek out about the games we played back in the day. My name is Adam Blank. Thank you so much for listening to the show. And this week it is episode 187, and we're talking about a bona fide classic for the PlayStation 2, a game that I did not experience for the first time until last year and fucking damned if that's not one of the biggest mistakes of my gaming career we're talking career in air quotes uh we're talking shadow of the colossus and i don't even know where to start with this thing it's not 40 hours long it doesn't have the most in-depth characters of all time it actually kind of controls like shit but it it's just sp- special it's, just, it's a special video game i mean i consider all video games works of art to various degrees but this game is just a work of art. I don't know how else to describe it. I don't think I've ever played a game like this before. And if you've never played it, don't worry. We're not going to spoil the ending of the game for you or anything. I hope that this episode convinces you to give it a shot. Uh, Johnny CCDC, a longtime supporter of the podcast, actually sponsored this episode. He's the one that kicked me in the bum and convinced me to try Colossus for the first time. And it's one of the best kicks my bum has ever received. He's going to swing by the show and explain why Shadow of the Colossus scratches his itch so well. And then my buddy Miklos makes his triumphant return to the podcast and we have a nice beefy discussion about killing colossi to bring a girl back to life while riding on an out of control horse and looking directly into the sun and if that doesn't all make sense it will by the end of this episode i promise uh like i said just a fucking bona fide work of art and we'll get there in just a minute because speaking of bona fide works of art it's time for yet another edition of the remember the game infamous intro And if you're new to the podcast, welcome aboard. Consider this your warning. Our intros are kind of long these days, but they're fun. It's like it's not like just all plugs and shit like that. It's like a it's just it's like a really 
mediocre podcasts, mediocre intro. I can't think of any other way to describe it. Uh, we have merch. I am going to do my plugs quickly, but they're quick. I promise. We have merchandise, hoodies, t-shirts, coffee mugs, posters, rocking badass art, by, uh, all drawn by my man, Joe. You can check him out at 4545creative.com if you're interested. And you can check out our merchandise at rememberthegamepodcast.com if you're interested. It is a stupendous way to support the show and impress those that you're trying to get to the sex times with. And of course, if you're like, I don't, you're like clothes aren't for me not my jam don't worry about it i'm naked right now you can always just support us on patreon it's only two bucks a month to start and you get two additional podcasts every week in exchange you get exclusive access to my gaming news show game patch each and every friday where i look at all the biggest news in modern gaming i add in my opinion and some profanities and stuff like that and then expansion pass every thursday is a different podcast every week i do game rankings we look back at characters and consoles we do comedy episodes there's game reviews this past week on expansion pass uh, we actually talked about some of our favorite gaming soundtracks of all time. It was one of our most requested topics. It was a lot of fun. And as is becoming tradition during the infamous intro, here is a sneak peek of last week's episode of Expansion Pass, our favorite gaming soundtracks. And this next game that I have on my list is another Super Nintendo game that I also think has fucking incredible music. Big Apple. 3 a.m. I can like see that game in my head as I'm playing it. I can like picture that level where they're in that like construction site and fucking giant robot Krang's head keeps popping up in the background and he's shooting lasers at you. So that was last week's episode and I got a lot of feedback about more soundtracks. So at some point... We're going to do a part two to that. I'm, I'm sure of it. I don't know when, but at some point we will. Uh, this week, tomorrow, 24 hours from right now, on Thursday, March 3rd, it is expansion pass number 100. And so I'm going to be counting down my 100 favorite video games of all time. Going back to about 1986, right up through 2022. I spent a lot of time on this list. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So again, two bucks is going to get you access to both of those shows, plus all the old ones. Plus, you get access to our Remember the Game Discord. You get a chance to vote in our Patreon patreon poll at the beginning of every month it'll be going live this week you get the ability to submit comments to be read on all of our podcasts and you get a shout out and you get to hear me mispronounce your name just like i'm about to do to most of these people a huge thank you to all of our newest patrons steven Veramontes, cranky caleb natirius sorry natirius mojo the helper monkey solid rake Corey chenoweth ian osborne dj olsh brant Hue. I'm Canadian with the French on it. It's either Huey or Hewitt. But I, there used to be a goalie, Cristobal Huey. I love that guy. So anyway, uh, Brant Hewitt, Joshua Edgington, Matt Babineau, Gabriel Dandria, Mark G, Gerard, La- Gerard Lavery, Rex Butts. I got that one right. Aaron Mitson, Fuzzy99, and Joe Altieri. I'm sure I fucked up a whole bunch of your names. Wear it as a badge of honor. Thank you so much for the support and welcome to Remember the Game Industries. And just to wrap up my sales pitch and we'll get into talking video games, don't forget 5% of our Patreon every month gets added to a pool. And at the end of the year, uh, my girlfriend and I are going to be donating all of it to my 24-hour charity stream for the Stollery Children's Hospital. We call that program Remember the Children. So any month you do support us on Patreon, not only do you get access to hundreds of extra podcasts, you're throwing a couple bucks at the kids, and that's just good stuff. Patreon.com slash Remember the Game if you're interested. And if you want to check me out on Twitch, I'm over there a couple of nights a week. Go to twitch.tv and look for Remember the Game, not Remember the Game. Member the game. I'm over there arguing with the hot dogs and playing video games and doing what they do on Twitch. All right? That's enough blowing myself. Let's blow some of you by blowing in the cartridge. It is our opening segment here on the show. I read a few comments and questions from our Patreons, usually gaming-related, but not always. And we call this segment Blowing in the Cartridge. He blows all right. He blows big time. That's it, honey. Get into the spirit. 
Let's blow. Our first blower this week is Andrew Wright, who wrote in and said, just wanted to give a shout out to all the fellow hot dogs out there. Over the past couple of months, there's been a ton of activity in the Remember the Game community, particularly in the Discord. And at this point, there's almost nightly games happening across several different consoles and genres. The folks I've met are an extremely welcoming group across all walks of life, and there's plenty of room for everyone. If you're listening and this sounds like fun to you, don't be shy and jump in. Thanks, Adam, for being the driving force behind such an awesome community. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. And they all, you know what? Isn't that the saying to make yourself look great to surround yourself with greatness i think that's didn't the, the pope say that i think something anyway uh yeah if you like i've had a couple people ask where is our discord and i hate to be that dick bag but like it is a patreon perk people are giving me money for these i gotta give them something but our discord's fucking awesome and yeah almost every night they're either playing fall guys or mario golf or among us there's all kinds of fun games over there really nice people we're probably going to start up some mario strikers action in the summer more than likely, I'll be playing some Mario Kart 8 once those new tracks drop. Oh, fuck, I can't wait. Uh, so, yeah, thanks, Andrew. I appreciate that. Our community is awesome. It's good stuff. Thank you. Uh, Phil McCracken wrote in and said, got some rough news over the weekend. Talking about old video games with my wife, and she brought up one of her favorites as a kid, and I thought I knew what it was. Then she Googled it and showed me the picture. What I had assumed was where in the world is Carmen San Diego turned out to actually be Mario is Missing. I don't know. What do I do? Phil, it's simple. If you are in a relationship with somebody who uh, grew up loving Mario is Missing, you should sleep with one eye open, my friend, because that person's probably crazy. And if Mrs. McCracken is listening to this, please don't be offended by that. But it's Mario's Missing. That, you, oof. Ooh. I mean, no, you know what? She grew up playing Mario's Missing. She's too smart to listen to this show. But uh, yeah, I would sleep with one eye fucking open, Phil. Uh, or she's going to feel your crack in. Be careful, my friend. Uh, ugh, Mario is missing. Fuck, I hate that game. It's not even a game. I feel like we should stop calling it a game because that's just a fucking, that's offensive to me. It is not a game. It is, it is the biggest scam in the history of Nintendo. And I shan't have it around here anymore. Uh, good A wrote in and said, this or that. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Super Mario? I will go with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reluctantly but i'll go with ninja turtles metroid or zelda i'll go metroid no problem on that one and nathan drake or joel miller i don't i assume joel miller is the guy from last of us i actually can't think of any other joels but i never i never really knew that his last name was miller um either way i'm going with nathan drake because joel is kind of bad and that's all i'm gonna say and and guys i don't want to spoil anything um but yeah ninja turtles metroid and nathan drake Oh, Ninja Turtles and Mario is fucking close, though. If Donatello wasn't a Ninja Turtle, I might have gone with Mario. Uh, Joe the Sandman, Mr. Sandman, wrote in and said, Hey, Adam, I have a Ninja Turtles question for you. What do you think of Bebop and Rocksteady? I asked because I saw a documentary. I think it was the toys that made us. And they mentioned the creators of the Ninja Turtles didn't create Bebop and Rocksteady. And they don't like them so much because their clumsy and silliness messed with the original dark theme of the comics. And also, what is your favorite depiction of these characters? I always loved them in the original cartoon and in video games, but I must say their portrayal in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows is my favorite. Uh, yeah, I won't get into like a super long history lesson about the Ninja Turtles here especially because i'll catch shit if i say something wrong but uh yeah they were created by i think playmates whoever it was that made their toys created bebop and rocksteady and then obviously they took off but if i'm not mistaken that's why they weren't in Nin ninja turtles 2 secret of the ooze because they weren't like they would have had to pay to get the rights to them and that's why they created toka and razar instead and who i also like but they're no fucking bebop and rocksteady uh so what do i think of bebop and rocksteady i adore adore those two to the point where if you don't know my left arm is a ninja turtles tattoo and uh, I have considered many times about putting Bebop and Rocksteady on my right arm. I just, they're so stupid looking, but I love Bebop and Rocksteady. And my favorite depiction of them is probably the old 87 cartoon. But I will say, I, I, I think that the Michael Bay Ninja Turtle movies take more shit than they deserve. I like those movies. And I thought Bebop and Rocksteady in uh, Out of the Shadows were fucking spectacular. Best thing Seamus has ever fucking done was to be in that movie. I, I thought they were great in that movie. Uh, thanks for writing in. Uh, Michael Matthews wrote in and said, Hey, Adam, I have a quick one for you. I've recently been rewatching Futurama, and as a Simpsons fan, I bet you'd have some great input on the series, and I'd love to hear it. I even think it had a video game released. I would love to hear your opinion on it if you've played it. Keep on keeping on, brother. Uh, so to answer your second question first, I've never played the Futurama video game, so I will uh, plead the fifth on that one. Is that the term? To just uh, choose to remain silent? Maybe I should just choose to remain silent. Plead the fifth. Whatever. I don't have an opinion on that. Uh, but yeah, I like Futurama. I haven't... 
So most of my memories of Futurama are I got really bad food poisoning like a long time ago and I was basically bedridden for like four days just throwing up and sleeping. And between the sleeping and the puking, I was watching Futurama and I, I bombed through like the first three seasons of it. And uh, I've never gone back to finish the series and everyone always yells at me and tells me I should. And I agree because I, I do really like Futurama. Frankly, I, I think it's a... I think it's a better show than The Simpsons. I think The Simpsons in their glory days was funnier, but Futurama is a better show. It's just deeper and all that kind of stuff. Plus the last like 20 years of The Simpsons have really tarnished their legacy in my opinion. But I definitely like Futurama. I'm 100% on board with the, I can't remember his name all of a sudden, but the dude that does the voice of Bender not wanting to come back for the reboot. I don't know if that got straightened out or not, but I'm on board and Fry is my fucking hero. I love Fry. I, I know everyone likes Bender and Bender's great, but I'm a, I'm a Fry guy. He's the fucking man. I love that man so much. Ah, I love Fry. Uh, that little, one of the early episodes where he's dealing with the really smart monkey and the monkey gets the girl's phone number and he's like, uh, Hey, you like bananas? And then he like puts the girl's phone number on the window and he's like, I got her number. How do you like them bananas? And then Fry just starts chewing like really slow and staring. It's one of my favorite things ever. I, uh, Fry's the best. Uh, thank you for writing in Michael makeshift money wrote and said, what are you hoping for the most with Sony's project Spartacus? I personally can't wait to hopefully have a good chunk of the PS1 PS2 back catalog, even though I'll need a storage locker for my backlog because of it. Uh, that's exactly what I'm hoping for. If quickly, if you don't know, we've been talking about it on my gaming news show game patch for a while. Um, PlayStation at some point this spring, it sounds like is going to be launching what they consider to be their response to uh, game pass Xbox game pass. And I know they have PlayStation now, right now no pun intended but they do plan to kind of revamp it and the code name for this new system is spartacus and that seems to be the rumor is that one of the tiers because they're going to have several subscription tiers and one of those tiers is going to contain classic games uh, that's what i'm after they've already said they're not going to be putting the big triple a games on their day one they can't afford it i believe that but you would get my money if you just gave me a collection of ps1 2 and 3 games and made them downloadable as opposed to streaming them motherfucking PlayStation. Now, if you give me a bunch of downloadable PS one, two and three games, particularly for this podcast, uh, you'll get my money every month. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. And then I, they can throw in like trophy support for those old games even better, but I'm not a big trophy guy. So I'm not gonna, I won't break their balls about that. I just want access to downloading those games. Uh, banjo, the bear wrote in and said, Hey Adam, what other memories slash memories do you associate with playing the SNES when you were growing up? I grew up playing the Nintendo 64 more, so I always associate it with playing with one of my childhood friends. We're still friends today. We'd play WrestleMania 2000 or WWF No Mercy. Then we'd play with our wrestler action figures right afterwards, or we'd have tournaments we'd have with Super Smash Brothers. His mom would order us all pizza because we'd stay later. It was great times. Uh, yeah, the super. I mean, I have great memories. My favorite gaming memories ever, as I've said on here before, are playing the wrestling games from the Nintendo 64 with my buddies in high school but memories of playing the super nintendo i mean i remember playing super mario world obsessively and like i used to trace the map like i'd pause or i'd leave it on the tv and just trace the map and just draw it over and over and over again um i remember playing games like battle toads in battle maniacs with my friends uh daniel and sean a lot i remember playing final fantasy 2 my buddy rob teach or kind of introduced me to final fantasy 2 and that was my introduction to rpgs i remember playing earthbound obsessively um yeah good t lots of good memory man yoshi's island donkey kong country i remember playing donkey kong country like a fucking madman like i played that game so much as a kid you'd swear it was the only game i owned at one point i fucking played it so much um just so many men so many great memories I, I remember rage rage throwing my snes controller over super mario kart and trying to get the gold cups on the 150 cc races and losing them on rainbow road and just oh fuck so many memories guy i love the super nintendo so much uh, thank you for writing in Banjo. And finally, before we move on, it's letter time. It's letter time. And uh, Augustin Rodriguez, I hope I said your name right, wrote in and said, Hey, Adam, I was having a discussion with my buddy at work the other day about how long will game companies continue to put out physical copies of games with the current generation, Xbox Series, everything, and PS5 still having disk drives. I think we're still probably 15 to 20 years away before we go all digital. I'd like to know what your thoughts are on it. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, because like, if you don't know, I buy mostly digital. 
Uh, that's just my preference. I have nothing fucking, every time I say that, at least one person messages me and tells me why I'm wrong because they're like, oh, do I like, oh, you gotta have physical media and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, guess what? When the fucking servers get shut down to all those games that are online, your fucking physical media is going to be useless too. So stop coming at me with that shit. Don't come at me. Don't. All right. You're just fine. If you want to buy physical, buy physical. If you want to go digital, go digital. I don't care. I prefer digital because I don't want to leave my house. I can just download it. All my games are just sitting there. It's fucking money. I do go physical on occasion. If it's a game I think I'm going to sell or if it's a game I'm not sure I'm going to be interested in, but buy, I, I would probably go about 80, 85% of my games I buy digitally. Um, do I think that they're going to get away from physical games? I don't think they will this generation, but I, I th it's coming. No doubt in my mind it's coming. I think the two things that are going to kill physical games are number one, uh, subscription services, I mean, Game Pass, Spartacus is around the corner. There's EA Play. There's Ubisoft Plus. It's You all know, like, they just keep adding up. And I think those are the future of gaming. And as those subscription services take off, I think that gaming will go the same way as movies did. You know, I know there's still the odd person that collects DVDs out there. But by and large, people watch their movies on streaming services. And I think that's what's going to happen with game. Maybe not so much streaming right away, but the subscription services and just downloading your games. So I think that's going to hurt it. Um, and I think I would bet you money that if they had their say right now, game publishers wouldn't make physical games because it sure it costs them more. They have to print the games, print the cases, pay to ship them, send them out there, use games games cut into their fucking sales whereas a digital sale is just all profit i'm sure they would love to do that but the problem is they need the brick and mortar stores to help sell their consoles and i think covid showed them that they don't need those brick and mortar stores to sell their consoles as much as they think they did because they've been selling them online and it's been i mean i wouldn't say it's been working very well because resellers are the fucking plague of the earth but the concept is there so i think this generation will still see physical games i think that by next generation whatever the ps6 and next xbox ends up being uh, I don't know if physical games will be gone, but I think that they'll be a novelty thing. Um, as opposed to like, I bet you like DVDs, like they still make DVDs, but I, I would have to, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I have to assume that it's, it's gotta be what 90% of people that watch movies probably watch them just streaming them now or buying them digitally. And I think that's where gaming is going. And I think once streaming is is mainstream no pun intended with video games like when the internet can keep up and that's what people are doing they're taking the google stadia technology and they're just streaming all of their games which i think is coming eventually as well uh th then I, I think physical media will die whether you like it or not i think it's coming i really do but i think we have another generation maybe two while there's still physical media available uh, thank you to everyone that wrote into blowing in the cartridge this week i love reading comments like that but it's time to move on so let's change things up and let's get into the official game show of Remember the Game Industries. Play one, remake one, erase one. And a huge thank you to Classic Concentration from the NES for unknowingly providing us with the theme music for the show. The rules are simple. Every week, I give our patrons three retro video games. They can play one as it was released. They can remake one as a modern game. And the third one is a race from time forever. And as always, there are no wrong answers, but there is a right one. We'll get there in just a minute. And last week, everyone yelled at me because I picked three of the SNES's best RPGs, which I loved. I loved getting all the yells from everybody because it's not supposed to be easy to play one, remake one, erase one. It's a, You're supposed to decide. It's like killing one of your kids. you got to decide which of your favorite games is going to die that's perfect so i tried to make it tough again this week i figured since we're talking shadow of the colossus which is one of the ps2's best games we would take three more of the ps2's heavy hitters and throw them into the pit we got metal gear solid 3 grand theft auto san andreas and silent hill 2 and for the first time in play one remake one erase one history we had a tie for the winner and silent hill was the remake in both of the two options that tied. But 33% of you would play San Andreas and erase Metal Gear Solid 3, and 33% of you would play Metal Gear Solid 3 and erase San Andreas. Fascinating. And then the other 33.33, 34%, I guess? Yeah, the other third of you would do something entirely different. But I love it. I've never seen a tie. I was so excited. I was. I, really, I wanted to show my girlfriend, but she just doesn't care. And I know she doesn't care. <sighs> anyway. Uh, let me see what a few of you had to say, and then I'll tell you what the right answer is this week. Dan S. wrote in and said, Play Silent Hill. This game was so creepy back in the late 90s. Honestly, more graphics in horror games means I won't play them because they're too scary. I'll remake Grand Theft Auto. 
to include not only San Andreas, but Liberty and Vice City as well. Give us better controls, a killer single player experience, and the humor from the PS2 trilogy, and all the race Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, it was fun. The story was heavy handed and super preachy. I loved it as a 14 year old. Going back now, I can say that it's a 6 out of 10. Now, I will say, Dan S., I don't agree with your order, but. Uh, I agree with you. The idea of remaking Silent Hill terrifies me because I don't want it more scary. It's already fucking too goddamn. I'm a pussy. And like, I've always said it. Horror games are terrifying as it is. I, I love the idea of remaking it. I think it makes sense to remake, but it's just already too spicy. And now you're going to throw some more fucking jalapenos or insert. I know if I just... Fuck, someone's going to be like, oh, uh, actually, uh, jalapenos are not that spicy. Yes, they are. I don't do spicy food because... My body hates it. Uh, so yeah, I, I get what you're saying. It's already scary enough. Uh, Lone Cart wrote in and said, I never played Metal Gear, so I'm going to play it. I'll remake San Andreas properly this time and erase Silent Hill because I'm a wuss. I, yeah, that's sound logic all around. Play a game you've never played, remake San Andreas on like the fucking re-release from before and then get rid of the game that you're scared of. I get it. Chris Jolly. I, I love that. I hope I'm saying your name right because if that's your, if I'm pronouncing your last name properly, that's my new favorite last name. I wish I was Adam Jolly instead of Adam Blank. Anyway, uh, Chris Jolly wrote in and said, play San Andreas. I've put so many hours into it since it was released. And whenever I play it now, it takes me right back to my high school years. I'll remake Silent Hill 2. It's one of the best horror games ever made, but copies are stupidly expensive now and everyone should have a chance to play it. And erase Metal Gear Solid 3. I've never played a Metal Gear Solid game. So sorry, Solid Snake, you gotta go. I gotta say, I've only ever played Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2. 1 is great. I think 2 sucks. And I don't think you're missing out. Chris Jolly, stay jolly. Don't play Metal Gear Solid. I don't yell at me if you like Metal Gear Solid. All right, Metal Gear Solid Two just ruined the franchise for me. That's all. Uh, Cranky Caleb wrote in and said, "All right, my first time getting to officially play, and I've only played one of these games." Now I'm gonna say before I read your fucking answer, Cranky Caleb, you don't sound very cranky, and I'm skeptical of your handle here. But let's see what we got. Cranky Caleb says, I'll remake Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. It's still my favorite GTA, and I'd love to see it remade properly. I'll play Metal Gear Solid. I don't know anything about the franchise other than it gave birth to Solid Snake, who is pretty cool in Smash, which leaves a racing Silent Hill, and I'm okay with that. I've never been a huge fan of the horror genre anyway. I'm putting you on single secret probation, Cranky Caleb, because you don't seem cranky at all. You're confident, Caleb. And I, I'm, confident Caleb uh, makes me into uh anxious adam because i was i was waiting for the cranky and the cranky never came <laughs> it's the worst podcast on the internet fucking worst uh Be benny mb wrote in he said i haven't played for a while let's take a crack at it i'll play uh snake eater which is, i guess metal gear solid 3 snake eater oh yeah I'll play Snake Eater. It's been a while since I've played this, but I remember it being a pretty solid title. We way better than Metal Gear Solid 2 and the survival aspects were up my alley. I'll remake Silent Hill 2. Some of the controls were a bit clunky in this game, so clean those up. Add some quality of life features, polish up the graphics, and you have a solid game. And erase Grand Theft Auto. Honestly, I never really got into the GTA series Beyond 3 and Vice City. I guess they're just not my flavor of game anymore. I think I'd be fine without GTA. Now, I will say I'm not a GTA fan either, but San Andreas is fucking excellent. I will. I'm just saying I'm not sound logic, Benny, but San Andreas is the only Grand Theft Auto that I finished. I like that game. Aaron Price wrote in and said, play Grand Theft Auto. I don't care too much for GTA personally. San Andreas had some good themes in it, though, and it was definitely a staple in gaming history. Agreed. Remake Silent Hill 2. Silent, uh, Silent Hill has had a dark cloud cast over it over the past decade or so, especially with PT falling through. Reintroduce Silent Hill 2 in a proper horror thriller to the new generation and show off the only game Pyramid Head was supposed to be in. I've never played this game, but everybody brings up Pyramid Head, which makes me not want to play it. And then delete Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid was a fine series built around the themes of war. Not saying it's too on the nose right now, but I think we need a break from the consistent reminder. Plus, it's simply my least favorite, and I think it was the least influential of the three games. Well done, Aaron. Well done. Like I said, personally speaking, I would go with one of the two, game, the two orders that tied for the win. So a third of you got this right, including... Gerard Lavery, who wrote in and said, play Metal Gear Solid. I love that game and all the well and all the while thought out tricks and hidden or pardon me. Mm -hmm. Boy, I suck at this. Gerard Lavery wrote in and said, play Metal Gear Solid. Loved that game and all the well thought out tricks and hidden tie-ins, such as playing dress up with Colonel Volgan. A no death run means the sorrow part of the game is piss easy, etc. I have no idea what any of that means, but all right. Uh, remake Silent Hill. That PT trailer sent shivers down my spine. I want it. And erase Grand Theft Auto. I'm just following the rules. They're not bad games, but I haven't played one since Vice City, so I won't miss it. I may not agree with the, your logic, 
Uh, I may not be able to read what you fucking said because I'm an idiot, but I do agree with your order, Mr. Lavery. I personally would play Metal Gear Solid 3 because I haven't, and everyone says it's excellent. Like I said, I hated Metal Gear Solid 2. I've avoided Metal Gear Solid 3 like the plague, but so many say that Metal Gear Solid 3 will bring me back in after Metal Gear Solid 2 broke my heart. So I will play it someday. So I'm going to play that. I'm going to remake Silent Hill 2. And I've never played this one either. I might never touch it due to the whole I'm a pussy thing. Plus, I'm sick of hearing about Pyramid Head. But I've said it a hundred times before. I just don't know if there's a genre in gaming that's benefited more from the advances in sound and graphics than horror games. It just seems like the best use of a remake would be to spend it on Silent Hill 2. And for all you Silent Hill fans, you'd stop asking for a new game and you'd all be able to poop your pants with another game that scares the fuck out of you. And then I'm going to erase Grand Theft Auto San Andreas primarily just because it's the only one that I've played. And I hate erasing games that I haven't tried. And I really like San Andreas. It's the only GTA game I've beaten. I would just rather try something new. Plus, I still have GTA Vice City 4 and 5 to play, so I have lots of rounds. So I'll get rid of San Andreas, re regrettably, regrettably. Uh, thank you to everyone that wrote in this week. What have I been playing? And then we'll get into talking... Uh, what are we talking about this week? Shadow of the Colossus. That's You know your fucking intro is too long when you forget the topic of the podcast during the intro. Uh, what have I been playing over the last seven days? Uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus. 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 Never, um, and listen, anyone that fucking yells at me over the way I say it now, you're fucking blocked. Because I get yelled at when I say Arceus. I get yelled at when I say Arceus. Someone sent me literature saying it is proven that it's Arceus. So Arceus, whatever. So we're going Pokemon Legends Arceus. I'm just going to call it Pokemon Legends. But anyway, I've been playing it. Uh, I'll be reviewing it on Expansion Pass maybe even next week. Uh, I really like the Pokemon catching mechanics. I really don't like the story and the cutscenes. I find them, the missions, and stuff, I find it very annoying. But I, I love catching Pokemon in it. Uh, I've also been playing Horizon Forbidden West, albeit not a ton because I'm trying to finish uh, Pokemon, but I, I'm loving Horizon Forbidden West. It's more of the same, and that's all I wanted. And I've been playing Need for Speed Most Wanted because it won uh, February, February, I say February. It won February's Patreon poll, and uh, I liked it a lot. I'm stuck now. I don't think I'm going to finish it. I got like three people left to beat, and I just can't do it. But I've got enough there that I can review it. My first non-kart racer maybe ever. And uh, I had a good time with it. So uh, keep an eye out for that episode. It's probably coming in the next couple of weeks. And that's it. Let's talk Shadow of the Colossus. That's why you're here. As always, I like to give our listeners a chance to sound off on the game we're talking about before my guests and I hijack the podcast for an hour or so. So let's get to a few of your comments. Electronic Emotions Program wrote in and said, it's a super chill and relaxing game like flower. Well, until you see that the flowers are ginormous beings you need to slaughter, but chill outside of that. Eco, Ico? I don't know if you say Ico or Eco, but Ico and The Last Guardian are great companions to this game. I hear that. I'm going to have to play them now because I really like Shadow of the Colossus, so I'm going to have to check those other ones out. Gust of Wind wrote in and said, I've never played this game, but my brother sleepwalks and once came out of his room asleep holding this game, yelling, this is the hardest game I've ever played, and promptly returned to his room. Left quite the impression on me. My brother ever did that, I'd never touch that game again because I would just assume it was fucking possessed or something. Uh, Matt DeBarbu, 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 Matt D., Matt, whose last name I can't say, wrote in and said, absolutely love this game, except three quarters of the way I fell into a chasm and it was impossible to get out of and it auto-saved me down there. It was a little weird broken area and I was never able to get out. One day I would like to go at it again. I would never touch a game again if that fucking happened to me, but I respect your uh, uh, your, your passion. What's the word I'm, I'm looking for? Your um, um, relentlessness. I respect it. I respect your relentlessness. <laughs> Thanks, Molly. Uh, Chalupa Cabra said, this is one of the first games I played when I finally got my hands on a PS2. I'll never forget the amazing environments and the challenging puzzle-like fights. Yeah, the, it's the fights. It's the puzzle-like fights that are what make this game genius, in my opinion. And we're going to get into that in like two seconds. Super Dave wrote it. He said, this game controls like a dump truck in a china shop, but the storytelling and subtext elevate the experience well beyond most anything that was coming out at the time. And most games coming out today, if I'm being honest with myself, I don't use usually go for nihilistic storytelling however i do enjoy games with a meta narrative and that helps me get through a really sad the really sad bits in this game i personally consider colossus meta narrative on par with bio colossus is meta narrative on par with bioshock and near <laughs> near automata fight me it's funny because dave did comment on his comment and say my computer auto corrected because when he wrote automata it recorrected it to a la tomato so it's now near a la tomato i fucking love that um but yeah i agree with you i i think that like having played this for the first time last year uh i do think i think shadow of the colossus stacks up against games today as far as stelly storytelling and stuff goes i, I agree with that 100 percent 
And then finally, Jared wrote in and said, Shadow of the Colossus. As highly rated as it is, it's still not talked about as much as it should be, in my opinion. The epic scale of the game, atmosphere, build up to the battles, and mechanics while fighting the Colossus were very innovative for the time, and many games have since borrowed from it. It was also a very good story with a fantastic ending. This is one of the this was the first game many years ago that kicked off my love for playing classics that I'd missed out on earlier, and I've been retro gaming ever since. I freaking loved this game. I fucking feel you, Jared. This was of all the games that I've played for the first time for the podcast, this isn't the best game that I've played of that bunch, but this was the, um, I know it sounds, it's a, it's, it's a fucking lazy word to describe it, but this might've been the most special of all. And this is a special, special video game that I think everybody should play. And so, uh, my buddy Miklos and I are going to talk about it, but before that, uh, Johnny CCDC, longtime hot dog sponsored this episode, and he's going to get a chance to explain what this game means so much to him. So I'm going to play some music. And then I'm going to go talk to Johnny CCDC, and then Miklos and I are going to talk about Shadow of the Colossus, which originally released in North America on the PlayStation 2 on October 18th, 2005. Enjoy the podcast, everybody. Let's go. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Everyone that listens to this podcast knows about our illustrious CEO, my dog Molly. But the other silent partner behind the scenes is my wife. And let me tell you, my friends, a 17-year relationship with another person that has to talk to and live with you is a lot harder to maintain than one with a dog. We've had our ups and downs, and as you all know, a relationship isn't all sunshine and rainbows. They can be a lot of work. You get out what you put in when it comes to relationships, and talking to a therapist can be a fantastic way to put in some work. They can help you work through your issues, learn to communicate better, and even just provide you with an ear to bend when you need it. I've talked to my therapist about my relationships, especially when it came to my stand-up comedy career and how much I was away from home. And they helped me work on ways to keep my relationships strong even when I was out on the road. Uh, it turned out our relationship was actually better when I was out on the road, but that's that's a story for another day. And I know, right? Therapy. Who has the time these days? BetterHelp hears you, and they're making it easy. Fill out a quick form online, and they'll match you up with a therapist that suits your needs, and that'll work around your schedule. You pick the meet times, and you can get your therapy fix from anywhere, over video, phone, or just chat. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash RememberTheGame today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash RememberTheGame. Okay, so as I mentioned uh, during the, I'm sure I've, I haven't actually recorded the intro yet, but I'm sure I will have mentioned it during the intro. This is another one of our our sponsored episodes. Remember, a member of the community was so passionate about a video game that they stepped up and were like, "You got to talk about this." And uh, joining me via the the Zoom, it's not the blank phone, it's the Zoom. I don't give out my phone number because I'm terrified of the world. Uh, but it's uh, Johnny CCDC, longtime member of the community. Johnny, before we get into Shadow of the Colossus, how's it going, buddy? Man, it is going fantastic. I'm so glad to be on this show with you today, dude. I'm I, so excited. Dude, you're always so nice. I'm like, I'm like, I always feel I we were just talking about this, and I was like, I always feel when people are too nice to me, I can't help but be like, what like are you planning to kill me or something? Like, no one's this nice to me. But I, I was like, if you are, you fooled me because you just seem so what's, nice. What's the investment? Why yeah. are you following me? Why what, nobody, what the, what's nobody the likes me? Well, anyway. Listen, man, look, we had that horrible, horrible thing happen once upon a time not too long ago, and I discovered you, and you literally kept me sane on drives <laughs> and, 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 and work and at home falling asleep when everything, everything truly sucked. And I'm up here in Northern Virginia in, in, in the United States, so like, you know, we're right here. We hear a lot and we deal with a lot. So you've been able to create just a void of happiness. And I just really appreciate it. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And uh, speaking of happiness, so mm -hmm. you uh, were on me to play Shadow of the Colossus. You actually, uh, a while back, were kind enough to give me the remastered, the PS4 version. Uh, and I played it and loved it. Then I went out and bought the PS2 version for this episode and replayed that and liked it as very much as well. Uh, but you guys are all going to hear all of my thoughts in a few minutes. So, Johnny, I'll shut the fuck up. The floor is yours. Yes, sir. Uh, why, why Shadow of the Colossus? There's like a billion games out there. Why Shadow of the Colossus? So it begins, like, and I'm going to try to be spitballing this here. I was and am a Nintendo fanboy from day one. 
um, had access to Sega. And so when the game system started to progress, I, you know, I ended at Nintendo 64 Dreamcast and eventually got sucked into the Xbox. And after that, there's all these great games coming out of PlayStation. Never owned one in my entire life. And I was working at a restaurant where I was talking to a, a fellow a bartender of mine and we were talking about, you know, games on the PlayStation. I was like, man, the game that looks fascinating to me is Shadow of the Colossus. And he goes, you haven't played Shadow of the Colossus? I was like, no, man, I haven't played anything on the PlayStation. He's like, you haven't played God of War? I was like, no. He was like, are you working tomorrow? I was like, yeah. He brings this PlayStation and Shadow of the Colossus and God of War and lends it to me and was like, I can't wait to hear your thoughts and lets me play it. And I just was enamored by the sheer epic all of this video game and fell in love with it. Returned it to him. Last time I ever played it, years, 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 years passed by. And my father gets a PlayStation 4 and I find out about this remake right. uh, that had already been out. And my daughter's all but four years old. And I'm like, I'm like, baby, we're going to play this game that dad is so excited about playing, Shadow of the Colossus. She loves this game so much. She knows the names of all the characters. She knows exactly how to beat them all. She tells people. She's got her own little character that she created called the Guardian Cat that's completely inspired by these colossi. <laughs> and, and, and she's also, you know, in that time, four years old. So she has the attention span of that and is like, can we play Shadow of the Colossus? Can we play Shadow of the Colossus? Every weekend, I think I have beaten Shadow of the Colossus since that gap of the one time playing it. I think I have beaten Shadow of the Colossus 20 times on every, <laughs> diff on every difficulty level, on every difficulty level. I love it. I still love it. I still love the game. It's just that now I really do need, <laughs> I need a break from it. I get it. But you know what sure. though, dude? I'll say like, I have not played it 20 times. I've played it twice, but I actually no. enjoyed it more the second time through because the first time it's fun. You're, it's an adventure. But the second time through, I knew what to do most of the time. And I was like, then it almost, I'm not a speed runner at all, but like, I could see it being the type of game that you just go back to and go back. You could beat it in a sitting if you know what to do. Like it's a, you know, four or five hours long. Yeah. Full time, I think it's six good. and a half. It's, it's like six and a half hours. And then you can, if you want to complete, complete it. You, I think it takes like 22 hours or sure. something like that. But it's, uh, like progressive. it's special, man. When you sent me and I started playing it, I, I, um, I, I, I call video games art all the time. Cause I do think yes. they art. Um, but I think that like, for example, super Mario world is art, but it's, it's fun art. I don't look at it as like a work of art. I just think it's really fun. Whereas like, and I hope that what I'm trying to say makes sense. Shadow of the Colossus is, is, is it's fun, but it is a legitimate work of art from the story to the music, to the graphics, to the concept of the game mechanics. Like I, I, I was so floored by this game. Like, the only criticism I have of this game, and I want to hear what you think of this because you know this game better than me, is like, I don't even think the controls are bad. They're fucking weird. They just take some time to figure out. And I don't, I'm like, did the people that made this ever play a game before? Because they tried to make something completely different, but the controls are so fucking weird. Why? Like, do so, you find so, them weird? Yes, yes. So the PlayStation 2 version in particular is really kind of fucked up with the controls man and and i uh i struggled with that just like everybody else but at the same time like w one if you get a chance to play the remaster they've done a little polish on it it's not perfect it's still kind of clunky with the controls but it plays way better but the controls yeah. are bad yeah. and, the, and the and the and the only other con i do have about this game is that there are these little lizards that you have to kill to acquire more stamina so that you can get better results when you have to fight these colossi and they are fast and wiry. And sometimes you are standing in front of a fucking shrine for 10 minutes trying to capture this one stupid, <laughs> stupid lizard. And you just want to murder people. It's so annoying. I, it's I, like, really, it's the one thing that gets my blood boiling about that game is those, I, those lizards. I honestly think I killed one lizard in two playthroughs. Like I just didn't, I, I didn't even know about them. I was just so into like I watched yours and I was like, man, this dude is going to have a hard go when he gets to Malice, bro. Because like that, uh, I remember seeing that you were, uh, <laughs> you were, Fucking, you were I didn't, I didn't realize they were there. I was like, this no is fruit, that's no fruit, no shrines, no lizards, no. nothing, man. Cause I was going to say like, I thought like, and it's not the game's fault. I should have read the manual, but like, I, I think that that giant world is just so empty. And like, I do like, I will say that's my other minor thing is I just like, and we're going to get into more of the game mechanics in a couple minutes when Miklos and I chat, but like, there's this giant world. And really, for the most part, you're just going out to find these 16 colossi to kill them to, to beat the game. And I, I, I liked the concept of it a lot. There were just a couple of instances 
where like my sword light, my light beam that tells me where the next Colossi is, is going into a mountain. And so right, I'm like, right. is this fucking Colossi in this mountain? Is he, do I have to go left or do I have to go right? And right. motherfucked if I pick the right direction like one time. <laughs> but at the same time, like the game is just so calming and peaceful that as long yeah. as you can get past the controls, uh, which you will, if you if you get playing it, you will. Yeah, um, you it's, you it's just, I like, I, I was so, I, I'm sorry. I, I mean, that I've let you talk. I'm just so mesmerized by this game. I just <laughs> thought it was gorgeous. Who's your, what's your favorite Colossi? Ooh, I knew, I, I knew you were going to ask this question. And the problem is, is I love them all. So like, I mean, I think that the night was probably the first one where I was like, oh my God, this is nuts. Um, so I love the night. Barba is one of these minotaurs that's got like this big, he's just a bruiser and rips down walls and he's super tight. Um, the ones that you hate, my daughter loves. Like, so she's big on like Avion, the flying one. She oh, loves. Fuck, I hate that. She loves Hydrus yeah. and Leo, the you know the dog Cerberus. Those are her. Yeah. Those are like perfect, and I love them too. Um, but I remember watching you get really frustrated during your playthrough, and I, uh, I, I, I tell you what, those are some of my favorites. You just have to, you know, once you understand the mechanic, you just got to get it. And yeah. Once you get it, you got it. But I, I, I do understand your your frustrations with it, those particular ones. Do you have a, a favorite? You know what? I actually like most of them to be honest with I you like, like the only like the only one that here and even the bird that fucking fuck that fucking bird <laughs> I thing it, yeah. i, I mean, like the it. concept of them i just hated fighting it because i was getting so fucking angry but yeah, like yeah, yeah. i i really did like all of them i just think this is such a if you've not played it we're making i are gonna get into it in a minute but like it's just literally the colossi are like the colossuses they are they are the levels they are the temples they are the bosses That's and solving each one i've just i've never played a game like this before mm -hmm. And I was so in awe, like in a, in an era where, especially because I know this was a PS2 game, but like yeah. it was, there was less creativity and more like this sells, like, you know, fast yes. car sell, yes. sex sells, Grand Theft Auto sells. They tried something completely different. And I wish that I had played it back then. Cause mm -hmm. if I had played it back then and had that nostalgic tie to it as well, uh, like I already think it's a masterpiece, but I would think that even more so if I, had like old school ties to it. I just think this is, I legitimately think this is like, if I had to make a list of 10 games that everybody needs to play. Yes. I truly think this is on that list. I, I, I say that to people. If you're, if you call yourself a gamer, this is a must play. hundred percent. Yeah. The story is, is, is emotionally wrenching. The music is as equally uh, moving to you. Yeah. And graphically, it's one of the most gorgeous things. Those open spaces that you have some issues with uh, that a lot of people seem to kind of crap on. I'm going to say, dude, that's a part of it. You are this one person in this forgotten land. You're not supposed to be here. No yeah. one is. And so there's a couple, what, birds, some lizards, maybe some fish. There's nothing here. And I think for a gaming perspective, some people might rack on that. But artistically and story-driven wise, it just puts you in this place. That it, is just an incredible place. It, it does work. Like, especially like if Breath of the Wild came out, because by the way, like- This is talks, the legacy of Breath yeah. of the Wild, bro. Every, I, everybody I talks- my notes. Everybody talks about how modern games are influenced by Breath of the Wild. I'm like, you play, Breath you of play this, this and you're like, Breath of the Wild was influenced by For this. Everything, the big creatures, big the time. stamina, the climbing, the music, the open world, the music changing depending on what's happening. Yeah. The, the arrows, time. the horse, all, the masks, the shrines, the temples. It's but if, all but if, based on it. But if Breath of the Wild's open world was this empty, people would shit all over it. I do think right, it right, works right. for Shadow of the Colossus. It's just, and, and, my my issue is not with the emptiness. It was just with my incompetence and getting lost sometimes. I got lost a lot. That was one of my cons too, is that light sometimes would be like, it's right here. It's yeah. right here. And you, yeah. you spend 20 minutes trying to find this damn Colossi. Yeah, I so honestly think you spend more time trying to find them than you do fighting them. And like fighting them is great, but sometimes trying to find them can just be... Oh, motherfucker. But. It can be hard and it can also be equally satisfying because the, the, the environment is just so damn beautiful. Yeah, like it is. that one Poseidon character, you go through that gigantic waterfall into the back and it's one of the most beautiful pieces of, of scenery digitally yeah. on, any, on any game. And Agreed. the whole, the whole thing is like that, dude. And, and then the last thing is, uh, and Mick and I are going to get into this as well. I, I just, one of the things that makes this game like beautiful to me is the, the minimalist approach. And it's yes. not just with the equipment and with the stuff in the world and things, but like it tells you such a beautiful story and it does it without really telling you anything. And yes. I'm not, and I promise everybody, we're not spoiling the ending. Mick and yes. I don't spoil the ending. Johnny and I aren't going to spoil the no. ending, but I'm telling you all, like it's not a really long game and the, the ending, the payoff is worth it. I, that's all I'll say is the ending is worth your time. I promise. It's not one of those movies where you watch it and then the ending lets you down or a game or whatever. You finish this thing and I'm, I, I finished it. I put the controller down. 
And I just was like, motherfucker. Like what a what a work of art this fucking game is. Mother I would debate. Fuck. I would debate its top five endings of any video game ever created. I'm it willing might, to it argue might be. that. Yeah, I'm willing and, to argue. I'll put my money on that. And it tells it without telling you anything. Without saying That's anything. That's the genius. Like there's no so much conversation dialogue. afterwards, man. Yeah, I could talk for hours about this, just like the mythos and like the lore of it. It's it's in the way it ties into games like Ico and The Last Guardian, the other yeah. games that these uh, that these guys made. It, it, just incredible stuff, dude. It really is. And I, yeah, I, I, I just, I, I'll get into now in a minute with Mick, but I can't recommend it enough. Um, yes. Johnny, we were talking beforehand, like to score this easy, easy scoring this thing. We got to go out of 16. Cause there's 16. I'll ask you, how do you, how do you refer to them? Is it just Colossus? Is it Colossi no, or is it Colossus? They're, they're, no, they're Colossi. They're Colossi. Thank you. That's, that's what, what I say. That's what they're called online. That's what they're called in reviews. That's it's what they're Colossi. named. They're Thank Colossi. you. The so Colossi if, is the individual. The Colossi are the, or the collective of right. what Dorman is, right? Like, uh, like, like, I think it's cacti is the plural for cacti. Yes, cacti. Exactly. So if we're exactly. scoring this thing, if we're scoring this thing out of 16 cacti, uh, yeah. what, would, what would you score? What would you score Shadow of the Colossus? 15 and some of the needles from the other cacti, because let's be honest, man, the game is a gem of a gem and it yeah. only gets a fraction for me because sometimes the controls are a little clunky. Sometimes you get lost and those fucking lizards. <laughs> if you want to hear what I think, you're going to have to listen to the rest of the podcast. But I, I pretty much agree with Johnny. It's a fucking phenomenal video game. I love this game. Uh, Johnny, we're going to keep chatting off air here, but I always like to uh, let other people use my platform for their own personal gain because that's what it's all about. So I will lay out. Johnny's information is in, the, in our description as well. But uh, what do you got? What are you up to these days? What do you got going on? So guys uh, that who don't know, Johnny CCDC stands for Catoctin Creek Distilling Company. And I work out of Percival, Virginia. Our distillery is up north in Loudoun County, Virginia. We are trademarked the Virginia Rye Whiskey. Virginia is the birthplace of whiskey in our country. And we have the most awarded whiskey out of the state of Virginia, most awarded distillery out of the state of Virginia. And uh, we have uh, a series of ryes, we do some gins, brandies, partner up and do some single malts and some different barrel finishes and some private labels. And you guys can have access to this by going, follow me on Instagram, follow my adventures of everywhere I go in the state. I'm the whole state. So Johnny CCDC, but then Catoctin Creek, or you can go to www.catoctincreekdistilling.com if you can't remember that, go to buyvirginiarye.com. We're in about uh, we're nationally sold we're internationally sold, sold through the eu uk we're in mexico the philippines we're in canada and uh and, and the rest of the uh, in the rest of the united states so uh please come and if you are in virginia and you are a fellow hot dog message me and i will find you on my journeys and we should link up and we'll send some sort of tag over to to adam and be like look what you've created you brought us all <laughs> together through whiskey and video games we love you Oh, I love it. And I got, I love whiskey. Oh yeah. That's the best. Yeah, fucking get, you'll, get, you'll get yours. You'll get your share, man. I got you. I got to check that shit down. Uh, you guys, again, all Johnny's info is in the description of this podcast. If you're interested, I am going to lay out now. We're going to play some music and then uh, Mick and I are just going to talk even more fucking shadow of the Colossus. But dude, Johnny, thank you so much for, uh, for being a fan and thank you for, for yes. sponsoring this episode. And most importantly, thank you for uh, introducing me to, just one of the most spectacular video games I've ever played. This thing is Man. magnificent. Thank you. Absolute pleasure. I love it. Thank you. So, uh, joining me via the blank phone this week is a good buddy of mine, frequent guest here on the show. Although we haven't talked, okay, like I say, we haven't talked in a while, but we were in the process of recording this episode about three weeks ago, and then everything hit the fan with me personally, and I had to just leave this poor guy. I left this poor guy on the phone for like four hours, and then finally he realized <laughs> I wasn't coming. No, I'm kidding. He hung up. Um, but it's my buddy, Miklos. How's it hanging, buddy? Oh, pretty good. Yourself? Good. Uh, well, you know what? If we make it through the next hour, without something going wrong, I'm good. Because between my leaving our recording and then you've had some, I'm not going to explain your fucking situation, but you've had some shit going on. And it's just been like this, this fucking podcast has been like the 17th Colossus. Because trying to tackle this recording has been a goddamn nightmare, Nick. Fuck. 
Oh man. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's been rough, <laughs> but we're finally doing it. We're talking Shadow of the Colossus, and uh, I have to, to to get this thing out of the way, dude. So I, I played both the PS4 remake, and then I played the original PS2 game. And, like, the PS4 remake, you know, looks better, plays a little better and stuff like that. But, like, I got to say, I was, like, playing the 20 or the playing the PS2 version in, like, 2021, 2022, whatever fuck year it was when I played it. I, I was impressed. I'm like, this is a, a really, like, we'll get into all of the other nuances. But I'm like, I, I this is a fucking special video game. Like, I'm impressed, it you know. It's, it, um, that game was weirdly hyped when it came out. Okay, so, yeah. I, and I was going to ask you about that because, like, as is, like, kind of well-documented on the show, I, I, don't, I haven't played a ton of PlayStation 2 games. Like, I've, I've been asleep at the wheel on the PS2. So, uh, like, I'm now just catching up on games that I missed on this thing. So, like, did you, did you play it back when it came out? Or did you play, like, the remake? Yeah. Or, like, like what, what have you done with this game? I, uh, I played it when it first came out. Okay. Um, beat it in the rental. It was. It's definitely like a rental game back in the day, right? Um, fuck, remember? Because the game isn't long. No, it's not long. I was gonna say first of all, like, oh, remember the days of renting video games? Those were fucking. <laughs> those were cool days. You, um, I mean, you still can um, if you have a library card. Yeah, yeah, that's true, and they're free. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. I love the library. Uh, but you're right. It's not a lot. Like, so the first time I played through it, um. Like, and I'll tell anyone that hasn't played this game yet, because I think by the end of this episode, we'll convince a few people to play this game. Like, oh, yeah. my first playthrough, I think, took me about 10 hours, 11 hours, but it's because I didn't know where to go. When I replayed it on the PS2, I think I beat it in about six hours, five or six. And like, yeah. I, like you're right. It's a short game. Like, I could see how someone could buy it and beat it in like a night or a weekend and then be like, oh, I can't believe I paid full price for that. But I got to say, dude, like I almost enjoyed it more my second time through because it erased a whole lot of the busy work of like trying to figure out where to go and stuff. Like I could, oh, yeah. I could see it being the type of game you play over and over again, like to try to, even if you're not a speed runner, it's, it's kind of a fun speed running game. I was just going to say that like, um, you get through it and you're like, oh, this is fun. And you're like, do I, like there was an immediate sense of because you know it's a rental and you got time left you're like do i play it again how fast can i beat this do you think i can beat this again yeah like and that's so like okay so like we should explain like if you've not played it we'll explain what it is uh the only thing i don't want to spoil is the ending um okay. and like i will just so let's just quickly okay because i want to get that out of the way so i don't have to worry about spoiling it i will just say like I, I usually like, I'll be honest, like most of the time stories in video games end up just pissing me off and I don't really care. I just want to play the game. But like the story in this game, like the, the basic concept of the game is you control this dude who's trying to bring this dead girl back to life. And you know, I don't know if they ever say if it's like his wife or his girlfriend or what, the, I think, like, do they? They don't. Yeah. No. If the game is so minimalistic storytelling, it's beautiful. It, it really is. And like the long and short is like, yes, you have this dead girl and you bring her to this like temple and and i'm trying to be vague so i don't spoil anything and like the the spirits or whatever you want to call them in the temple are like well we can bring her back to life but you have to do this thing for us and it is that thing ends up you have to go out and kill 16 creatures these 16 colossuses colossi is i don't know if that's the plural term but that's what we're calling them <laughs> um, colossi. colossi and like I got to say, like, I really didn't think much of the story because, like you said, it's a very basic minimalist story. And I kind of thought, like, all right, well, I'll beat the 16 creatures and then she'll come back to life and they'll run off skipping together and tra la 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 la. And without spoiling it, like, I I, I got to say, like, I was impressed playing the game. The ending hits you like a ton. Like, the ending is fucking superb. Like, the ending hit me like a ton of bricks. And I was like, wow, that was like I, cl I was like like well done like that it's a fucking payoff it's worth it like the payoff is worth it Just, oh yes um <clears throat> i don't know what else like, to say without spoiling without, it. without without spoiling it right like it's got like kind of well uh like a biblical reference um to king nimrod and uh i'm not gonna lie to you i have no idea who that is okay so nimrod's this king who amassed all this power and then got cut up into pieces and then spread around so that he could never get back together okay right so this is kind of what you're doing in the game oh like, okay 
every time you kill one of those colossus and all that black stuff spills out yeah you get like a little bit more dark like pale your your hair gets darker yeah yeah you start becoming more uh i don't want to say evil but i mean it kind of is the like your um clan or whatever you're from they're like don't go in there that's an evil place and all this right and that yeah like they do warn you like they're like this is a bad idea but like whoever this girl is you're so desperate to bring her back to life that you're like i don't care like i'll do i'll do anything it takes um and okay i didn't know that but yeah like that and like that bit like without spoiling anything that is the story is like you you bring this girl to this temple and then these voices tell you if you kill these 16 colossuses we'll bring her back to life and then uh, and then the game starts and yeah. like for those of you that hate like long cutscenes and stuff like you're not going to get them in this game like there's really quick ones and most of them are basically just watching the colossi the colossuses die like that is yeah. the cut like it's all like i will say too like as someone that i fucking hate long cutscenes, uh i love that this game like respected my time it was like yeah go fucking keep playing just get her i, I loved it loved it well yeah and uh I know from talking with you so many times that you hate like, like with Pokemon or any RPG, really the like little battles that you have to fucking do all the time. Yeah. Or even like breath of the wild where you're just running through, you know, little enemies all the time. Yeah. There's none of that. No. Um, like this whole game is very minimalist. <clears throat> like I, yeah. like, I wonder if they really, like, and I know there's other games in this, like, like the uh, series or franchise, but like I haven't played them, so I can't speak to them. Like I honestly wonder if this game released today, like would like would people? Because I think a lot of people consider this game a masterpiece, and I'm I. It has it has one thing that keeps it out of that class for me, and I'll get there. But like it is a work of art without fucking question, and I wonder like would people love it as much today, or would people be like it's too empty? Because like people shit on like Breath of the Wild for being too empty. And it's like, this game is like you, there's literally these 16 giant creatures you go fight. And it it is a big, empty, open world map other than that. Well, I kind of, it, in, uh, it kind of is like a precursor to a bunch of different games, I guess. Not, no, not in the sense that it's like in the same storyline or anything, but you have like, this is a groundbreaking game where like sure. uh you can see how Assassin's Creed is modeled after a lot of it. Yeah. Um you know, Breath of the Wild for sure modeled oh, after a lot of it. With um, definitely. The the puzzle aspect of of beating all of the bosses is like very portal like. Right? And that's another short game that people love, very minimalistic storytelling. Sure. Yeah. Right. It's like you got to just solve puzzles. <laughs> yeah, you can like dude, the like when I was playing it uh, for the first time, like I've not played Portal, but like Breath of the Wild, uh, like I hate how every game gets compared to Breath of the Wild these days. But like this was one of this is where I was playing this game, and I'm like, holy fuck! Like this, like you can see the influence this had on Breath of the Wild. Like this is one of those games that you can just see. Like I, I can't speak for how other game developers look at Shadow of the Colossus, but like based on like the influence I see from it in other games, I have to assume that other game developers looked at this, like admire this game, and oh, were like, yeah, we want to absolutely. borrow stuff from this game. You know what I mean? Um, it's it's yeah. just yeah, it's it's like we'll that's, get- exa- that's exactly it. It it was like uh, a simple game. It had a lot of mechanics that we really didn't see before. Yep. And oh, it just, it kind of not revolutionized, but definitely inspired so much. Yes. And I mean, I only brought up three games with just certain aspects. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, it, that's the like, rev, like, yeah, like ins- inspiration is the thing. Like you can see the inspiration that this game has had on so many, so many other games. And we're going to get into the actual game. If you've never played it, I want to explain what this game is. Cause like, I don't like. I'll ask you, dude. Like, maybe you have. I don't know if I've ever played a game like this before. Like, um, before that, I don't think so. No. Like, I, I just like so. Like, Mick mentioned, there's there's minimal story. You have this big open world, but like, there's no levels. There's no enemies other than the sixteen colossuses you have to fight. Like, there's no random enemies you run into on the map that you need to fight that are gonna kill you. There's no buying stuff there's no skill trees to upgrade like your endurance 
it goes up yeah. as you kill enemies, but like there's no skill tree for you to do. You don't learn a bunch of new moves. Like there's no. just you literally like so like when the game starts, you drop the girl off and they tell you go out and find these 16 colossuses and then colossi, whatever. And then you go fight the first one. And like, that's like, that was, I had no idea what to expect because you have a horse and you go out on the horse and you go into this giant open world. And then it tells you to find the, the first enemy. You literally have to be in the sunlight and you just hold your sword in the air. And then like the, the sword, the sunlight reflects off of your sword. And you turn like your character to like face different directions. And as you start to face the right direction, the sunlight reflecting off your sword focuses into like a beam. And eventually it'll be like a laser pinpoint beam that's telling you this is the way to the Colossus. And then you just have to explore this overworld. And like most of it's just riding your horse, but occasionally yeah. you have to like climb a mountain or swim or whatever. Um, yeah. It's, you know, there are obstacles and you have to find where to go. And like, it's such a great game because it shows like a lot like with no tell storytelling, no cut stories, no talking, you really get this feeling of like uh quiet desperation. Yeah. You know, it's like just you and your horse. Yeah, there's, no, there's no, nothing like, else. You're, I mean, you're alone with your thoughts. Yeah. Like there's music like during the fights, but like it's there's minimal music. It's just like I gotta be like, and I and I say like we are gonna get back to describing the game, but I just I'm really stuck on the art of this game because like I say this with the utmost respect. I mean this is the highest praise possible. Like this kind of plays like an indie game to me. Like yeah. you know like when you play like a big like I'm just thinking Ghost of Tsushima, Horizon, whatever like an open world God of War, fucking breath of the wild like you can see the triple a like the music the voice acting or whatever like adding all these characters filling the world like this plays like a very minimalist creative empty but not in a bad way game like this really does play like a like a an indie game and i say that with the highest possible praise because i adore creative indie games and that's what this plays like um, it's a it's a clinic on storytelling yeah it really is <laughs> Cause like, it really doesn't tell you anything and that, which is the genius of it. Um, yeah. and you kind of start to get a feel for it. So, okay. So getting back to it. So like when you're on your horse, you look, you can look for a colossi. And so like, you go find the first one and I think you have to like climb a little bit of a mountain or whatever. And then he's, he's there. Uh, and we'll get into the controls in a minute. Cause if I have one criticism, that's where I'm going, <laughs> oh, yes. but we'll get yes. there, but we'll get there. <laughs> uh, and then when you find like, to me, one of the most epic moments in the game is finding the first Colossi because it's this fucking Colossus because it's this this giant fucking creature. It like I don't even know how to explain it. Like a a fucking I don't know, like a giant man bear pig. <laughs> like like I don't know what to call it. Like just this giant fucking creature with like a club. That I is feel like like that it's like a giant version and more uh elemental kind of like troll like you know, in Harry yes. Potter, that, that troll that comes in in the first one, uh, and it's just or second one maybe. I never, read, um, I never read Harry Potter, but it does well, look, it does look like a giant troll though. Yeah, um, right. So like, you got this big dumb beast. Yeah, and you just gotta climb all over it. And that's the thing is like, as I'm not, I'm like, I don't know what to expect. I've never looked up anything about this game I'm playing. I'm like, what the fuck? So like, there's no enemies, and then all of a sudden I trigger this boss fight, and I'm like, what the fuck? There was no enemies. It's just a boss fight. But then, like, it kind of teaches you that, like, the only enemies in the game are these 16 bosses. And the 16 bosses are the levels. Like, when you yeah. get to it, like, they're not they're not simple hack and slash boss fights. Like, you have to, like, the, each boss has, like, a weak spot on them, which you can find by the same way as you found them, by holding your sword up in the light. It'll tell you, like, where the weak spot is. And then you have to figure out how to climb or or whatever or knock the boss down because you're literally these things are like 40 50 60 times bigger than you you have to figure out how to like get onto its head where the weak spot is and then attack the weak spot in its head to kill it and that's yeah. like that's this that's the secret sauce in this game is there's 16 unique boss fights that are these like these these puzzles that you have to solve. And as frustrating as it can be when you can't figure out how to like, you see the weak spot up on its head and you're like, well, I can't fly. I can barely jump. What the fuck? But then you realize, and like, and we're not going to spoil everything, but like, it's the first one. It's easy. Like when he swings his club at you, if you move, now his hand is on the ground. You can grab the hair on his arm and climb up the hair 
and like start climbing up them. And like, yeah. once you figure that out, like figuring out how to attack the 16 bosses is like the most satisfying thing I've ever experienced in a video game. Well, especially too, because like, uh, usually when you see like the intro to all of the bosses, there's, you know, like a little scene before fighting them or like when they appear and but they always give you just like a slight little clue. Yeah. Right. So like you kind of have to pay attention to these cutscenes to understand what you're doing. Yeah, you do. And like getting back to the beginning of this chat where we were saying how the first time you play through it, it might take you, you know, like it took me 10 or 15 hours or whatever. Second time, it literally took me like a fraction of that because I didn't have to solve the boss fights anymore. You still have to go through the motions, okay. but like you will yeah. like, I-, I won't lie to you. Like I had a couple of fights on my first playthrough where I started to get frustrated. Cause I was like, I can't figure out what the fuck to do. But then when you like, I'm imploring all of you, if you're listening to this and you've not played this game, look it up if you have to, but really try to solve it without looking it up because yeah. there's not a ton of options. Like you can jump, you can grab onto like hair. Like they're, they, they have like giant, like shaggy fucking animal hair that you can climb up. There's like ledges, like, cause they'll be wearing like armor. So you can grab like the ledge of their armor and like, you know, hold onto the lip of it. But like you can jump and climb and you have a sword and you have a bow and arrow and that's it. Like, yep. so like anything you need to solve to beat these guys is either in those four moves or using the environment around them somehow. Yeah. Or like studying what they do yeah. uh, to affect the environment. Yeah. Like their pattern and how they interact with the environment and stuff. And like, yep. and that's, and, and to be honest with you, like I, I, once I <laughs> figured out how to beat them, no, only the only one that gave me any bit of trouble really after I figured out how to beat them is the final one is a motherfucker. Um, and then there's like well. a, there's like a, a bird above water. And it, the only reason he's hard is because if you run out of stamina, cause you need to use your stamina to hold on to like their hair or a ledge or whatever. And when you're yeah. not using your stamina, your stamina meter fills up again. But if they try to shake you off or twist, which they'll do like the physics in this game are great and they'll throw you off. And if you're not holding on, you'll fall. And that bird kind of pissed me off sometimes because I just couldn't stay on him long enough to kill him. The the water guy, for me, the one <laughs> like that takes one you of, underwater. Under, yeah, and he's one of the first ones. He's like in the first four or five, right? And yeah, I, like, I think Holy so. Fuck. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. But yeah, no, yeah, like it's there's a couple, but like the the frustration is rarely from not being able to solve it. Once you do solve it, the only thing stopping you from beating them is the controls might fuck you around. But like yep. it's not really that hard of game. It's just a thinking game. It's a it's a it's kind of calming. It's a very soothing game most of the time. Um yeah. until you get fucking mad because the controls are fucking you around. Oh yeah, there's lots of times um uh where just the transition from like holding to uh getting back into climbing. Yeah. Just it throws you right off. Like, dude, like, yeah, it's like, it's fucked. Cause like, you'll find, like, so when you do find their weak spot, it's like a grow it, glowing, like, green symbol. Like, that you, usually it's like under some hair or whatever, but you can see it. And then what you need to do is, like, for example, the first guy is glowing spot, like, is on his head or whatever. You get up there and you need to be grabbing onto his hair to be able to do, like, a thrust move with your sword to do damage to him. But while you're, it, while you're grabbing his hair, he might try to shake you off. And that's and costing that, you stamina. That that fucking thrust <laughs> takes forever. <laughs> oh, so like, yeah, like once you're holding, you literally just hold like, like you're grabbing with like, I think it's like L1 or whatever. Like one of the shoulder buttons is how you grab a hold of the creature's mm-hmm. hair. And then you just hold the attack button down to like, you can do like a really quick little like poke with your sword or you can do a giant like arch your arm back. You know, like I stab and, and you really, you, stab. you really have to. You really have to do the, like the the arch. You do to do any damage. Yeah. Like you can poke it, but that is not. You're you're gonna spend way more time. Yeah. You and need, while yeah. you're while you're holding it, then he, if any of those things start to shake, you lose. Yeah. Your attack. It cuts out all the momentum you've built up in your charge attack, and you need to start over from scratch again. Because because you're because uh, what the fuck is the name of the the, the character? Do they even say what his uh, name is? The boy. The wanderer. The wanderer. Just the wanderer. He has to That's like it. he has to like stop charging up his sword attack and reach down and grab the hair with both hands again to stay on him. And so then you lose any of the momentum. And it can be frustrating, but it also becomes, especially if you go back and play through it multiple times and you're trying to kind of speed run it. Um, it kind of becomes like one of the mechanics in the game of like it's a risk reward where you're like, how long can I charge up this thrust without risking losing all of it? Because the bag the Colossus is trying to shake me off of their back or whatever. 
Um, it's but like the that's what I was going to earlier though is like the the physics <coughs> plays so well because you run out of stamina as you go, but like you can let go and not hold on to them at all and let your like you're catching your breath and let your stamina fill up. And as long as they don't try to shake you off, you won't fall. But if they yep. start shaking, you better be quick on that fucking trigger button. And that's where you'll oh, yeah. get frustrated because they'll shake you off and now you need to climb all the way um, back up them to the fucking weak spot again. That's exactly it. But it's I I was just I remember fighting that first boss, and that's all I did. It's like he's pretty easy. Like you, you know, a couple of stabs, you kill him. Um and then you like fall to the ground, and then it like, kind of flashes out, and then when it flashes back, you're back at the 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 temple i guess so whatever where you dropped off the girl and a statue collapses in it representing one of the 16 colossuses and then they give you a hint as to what you're looking at for the next colossus and then you call your horse and go right back out looking for the next one like it's super minimal no backtracking no having to ride back to the temple no villages in between to buy shit you like as soon as you kill that colossus you're back at the temple and you're off to the next one and that's that's what kept me playing because i was like you're respecting my time like nobody's business here you're like, there's yeah. no fat. Let's just get right, right. to the next one. Right. It's, I think that's a brilliant way to do things too. Like, oh, you beat it? Go back to the beginning. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, Me too. The only, like, so, and we're going to flip back and forth because I have, I have two major, criti- like one major criticism of this game and one minor criticism. And my minor criticism is that, and I understand that it's part of the game and it's part of the puzzle solving, but like there were a couple of them where like you're trying to find them on this massive overworld and you hold up your sword and the beam of light, say it goes like into a mountain. And so you're like, okay, well this guy must be on the other side of the mountain. So you pick left or right, but then maybe you go the wrong way. And it turns out on the other side, there was like a little path into the mountain and he's in there fucking whatever. There's a couple where like it can get frustrating trying to find them because it's, it's not like the, the beam of light (laughs) off your sword is this straight line but it doesn't mean you have to go in a straight line to go find that the Colossus. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it can be, it can be fucking like there were a couple where I just was like, I'm like, nothing can kill me here. I'm no, there's no enemies. There's nothing to die. I just need to find it. And I'm like, I won't lie to you. Part of me wishes the overworld was just a little bit smaller just so I didn't have to waste so much time looking for them. But I also think that's kind of part of what they were going for too. Yeah. It, but such on that, you know, like it's a minor inconvenience there's really no benefit to searching the entire map no you know like in in any other game that's you know this open world or even uh you know most rpgs where like they give you a choice between left or right you know if you go right and the boss is there or you know that's where you're supposed to go if you had went left there would have been an item or something that might have helped you right yeah this, it's like oh no i just went the wrong way like the thing is, is yeah like i didn't even know this but somebody was telling me after i beat it twice that there are like collectibles there's like shining lizards you can go out and kill that like will improve your health or something hmm. i never yeah. i never looked for any of them and i never needed the increased health or anything no, like you, and, I, and you really don't No, like it's, it's cool that they're there but like I didn't think there was any emphasis on them. And like, I didn't even know they were there. I didn't read the instruction manual either. Uh, Honestly, uh, this is the first I'm really hearing about it. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I just, and like, again, like to me, I would have rather traded them in and make the overworld a little smaller because it can just be a little bit frustrated. Like, and like, and uh, you know what? Let's just, I want to talk about the good things down the home stretch of this episode, because I really do love this game. So like, let's just address the elephant in the room. Like, What's frustrating the most about exploring this overworld and trying to find these 16 creatures is like, I know there's some people out there that love this game that are going to argue with me about it, but like, I'm sorry, this game controls like a bag of shit. Like, I don't get why the controls are this. Maybe it was by design. You like, you like, you like when you play like old resident evil and it's those shitty tank controls. I've always felt like maybe those add to the game a little bit because it makes it tense because you're so slow moving. I don't feel like it's a benefit to this game. It just makes me fucking angry sometimes. Okay. Um, I get it. Um, what I think, and this is just how I think and feel about it, uh, mostly because I was talking with my buddy about uh, Jedi Knight 2 um, and how the controls and everything is on that. And this is you know, a game that was for the Xbox and PC. 
Uh, but it's playing it for the Xbox. You can get it for the Switch. It's where my buddy's playing it, and he's just like, these controls fucking suck. Right. Everything about this fucking, like, trying to get through the first few levels before you get your Jedi powers in that is just this horrible controls. Okay. And I feel like, and especially if you go back and play, like, older games, uh, Fable was like this too. The first one um, is, though, it kind of goes with, like, how the controller was set up and how other games were and uh, more of, like, an experimental, like, what can we do and how do we map all these buttons and... You know, like, as video games have progressed since then, a lot of those things have improved in other games, so you can draw on all that. Right. Right? And, so, and, like... And I... And I, I... I just... Sorry, I don't mean to... I just... I want to say, like, for what it's worth, like, I'm dumping on the controls, but I also get that it's a PS2 game, and it kind of trailblazed a little bit. Yeah. So, like, you need to give it a little bit of leeway, mm-hmm. because you're right. We're used to better controls by today's standards than we were back then. Right? Like, yeah, it's... And, like, so... Uh, yes, those controls are fucking horrible. Um, and I know that particularly uh, that boss where you got to ride the horse and shoot the bow and arrow. Oh, <laughs> that's the worst one. The worst one. Drives me which, insane. Which is like, all in all, that that whole boss fight is like probably the most stunningly beautiful Wait, and like, wait, well sorry. Are you are you talking about the underground? Because there's two. There's the guy that's underground, and then there's the flying thing with like the hemorrhoids underneath them. The the one with the hemorrhoids underneath. Okay. Yeah, that one's the one that really drove me crazy too. Yeah, um, because that's because that whole map for that boss is huge. Yeah. Right? Like it's so big. And you you it if you don't get the uh the hang of riding that horse and shooting the bow and arrow takes forever it really does and it's because so those hemorrhoids, uh, those hemorrhoids grow back <laughs> yeah like if you don't know what we're talking about he has these like bubbles on him you need to pop as like part of fighting him it's you he, know what? i don't want to spoil anything about the fight but it's really infuriating he's, he's like a blimp <laughs> yeah it's really infuriating blimp. <laughs> so like you're right like and to so to an extent i'm like well you're right like this is kind of a an older game and that's what you know controls were different back then at the same time it just doesn't feel like the optimal set. Like, I feel like they could have done better. I personally, I found riding the horse to be the most frustrating part of the controls. Like, that horse handles like a bag. I hate that fucking horse. I, he, I want to make him into glue. I hate him. And, like, riding him drives me fucking insane. But It's, uh, it's so rigid. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it is. But I will also say, like, maybe you don't all know this. I don't know how many episodes you guys have listened to, but, like, after whether or not a game is fun, the thing that matters to me the most about a game is how it controls. Because I'm like, a game can be a fucking blast. If I can't make it work, I don't care how good it looks or how good it sounds or whatever. Um, and I got to say, this game is kind of an exception to the rule for me because like, I, I don't think it controls well objectively. But despite that, I really really like this game like i'm like this game is a uh, is is uh, a a, a, a it's a work of art it's it's incredible and so it's like i like this game so much that i'm willing to look past the fucking controls and if you've never played it and you're worried now you're like ah the controls suck the controls they don't suck they're just different but like tough it out because if you get a feel for them and you get used to it you you get to experience one of the most beautiful video games i've ever played in my life like it's worth figuring out the control system it yeah, really it, is. It's um like a play, kind of like a minimalistic playable uh, Miyazaki film. Um, I don't know if you know who that guy is, but he was like Howl's Magic Castle, and no, uh, I don't. My neighbor, my neighbor Totoro. Um, but basically, like in all this guy's movies, uh, you have a hero, but there's no bad guy, right? R- really, and, that, <laughs> and that's. Game. And that's what this game kind of does that too, because like, and again, we're not going to spoil anything, but like there really isn't an enemy. Like you bring this dead girl to this temple and then these voices are like, well, if you kill these 16 creatures, then we'll bring the girl back to life. But then you go out to fight the creatures, but you're like, are these creatures bad? Like, are these demons? Like, are the, like, am I supposed to be fighting them? Are the voices at the temple bad? Like, am I bad? Like, you're not yeah. really sure. Like, all you know is that you're driven by bringing this girl back to life. 
Yeah. Like, and, and it's just beautiful storytelling. It sure is, man. And like, again, like I, like, I feel like I'm like the only two things I wanted to criticize were I found the, the map to be a bit of a pain in the ass sometimes to find a couple of these guys, which I do think is part of the part of the game. I just found it a little bit irritating at times. And there will be times when the controls make you want to pull your fucking hair out. But the more you play it, the more you get used to them. They absolutely fuck you so many times. <laughs> they really do. But the, but you know what though? At the same time, like I don't. I bet you I only. I I maybe have died at this game two or three times ever. Like you, yeah, I well, never really they, die. They do a really good job of making sure that so nothing really kills you. Like the the Colossus but, but can. also making it um, good enough that uh, like. <clears throat> Uh, like so, they can't kill you, but it also makes it like challenging enough that you're if you die, you're like really kind of fucked up. Yeah, agreed. Like it, like when you are fighting the Colossus, is 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 the, the whatever the fuck the, the when you're fighting the Colossus, um, I, I, I think it's just like moose. It's the plural of itself. The Colossus, oh uh, maybe <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Colossus is Colossi, Colossus, whatever. When you're fighting them, yeah, maybe it is. We'll call them the moose now. When you're fighting the moose, <laughs> uh, they are kind of like giant moose. But anyway, like when you're when you're fighting them, uh, you will take damage. Like some of them can hurt you, like shocking you, or you can take damage from falling off of them because you're pretty high up in the air. Or like some of them swing like a club or a sword at you or try to stomp on you. Like they can hurt you, but like it takes quite a while for them to actually kill you. And you're right. Like it feels like if you do actually get hit so many times that you die, you can't help but shake the feeling of like one or two hits. That was the controls, but you're like eight hits. Maybe I just fucked up. You know, like that. Yeah. You're right. It feels yeah. like it's your fault. It does. It does. Right. Um, They're like, oh man. So I, like, I really, I really screwed the pooch on this one. Yeah. Like if they That's had, it. dude, like if this, if they had cranked the difficulty in this game up to play like a dark souls, like I, I would have rage quit it. Like, cause the controls do fuck you around. It's just so forgiving that it kind of makes up for them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a good point. Cause yeah. Oh, oh God. I would have lost my fucking mind. If like it had been two hits and I had to go back to the temple and go find him again. I never would have made it. I would have been like, you can fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. Um, <laughs> So, so like, those are the bad, like, getting back into more of the good things, too. Another thing I wanted to point out is, like, I really do think the 16 uh, Colossus are, are so well-designed. Like, I don't feel like there's two of them that play the same. Even like, though some of them look and kind of act the same, yeah. they're, they're not. No, like, there's, like, honestly, like, there's probably, of the 16, there's probably four or five that are just giant creatures that are trying to, like, squash you, basically that you need to climb up. But even them, like some of them, you need them to swing their weapons at you and you climb up their weapons. Some of them, you need them to interact and hit the environment to knock something down that you can climb up the environment and get up there and hit them. Um, like, and then the, not, not to mention both, both those dog fights, the what? the, the, the like big dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. Yes. Like the, the, the one with uh, the fire and stuff. Yeah. Um, when I went back and looked at uh, just the bosses. For, for doing this i re definitely remember like probably the six or seven and then there's like a chunk in the middle i'm like i don't remember these at all and yeah i was like did i did i beat this game no i beat this game i know i beat this game and then afterwards i was like oh i remember all these bosses yeah but so like it's, it's it's very possible when i was playing this you know because i was younger i probably played it with my brothers or stepdad or friends yeah you know, so I may, might not have beat them all myself. Well, and the thing is, is like, you're right. Like they do, like, I won't lie to you. If you, if you made me sit here right now and list off, like, you know, describe the 16 fights, I, I would forget some of them. But like, while you're playing them, it never feels like, like, you know, when you're playing a lot of video games and you keep coming across like basic enemies and you're just like, fuck, I've done this so many fucking times. It never feels yeah. like that in this game. Like, yeah. even if it does feel kind of like a previous fight, they all, I think part of it is the fact that they're the only 16 enemies in the game. And each one is such an epic confrontation that even when they are kind of similar to each other, you're just lost in the experience. Cause it just feels like you're taking on this big epic fucking quest, you know, like yeah, everyone just feels so special. And then you add in the fact that like some of them are in the water. There are flying ones. There's a couple you need to fight from horseback. There's the fucking it, final one, which is a goddamn fucking nightmare. <laughs> 
but, <laughs> but like without we'll uh, get to that guy later yeah um well like um there's that second dog fight when it's in like um what seems to be some kind of arena or yeah. like coliseum yeah yeah and and the whole thing is basically you're not fighting this thing at all till the end and it's just yeah. a giant puzzle and you're running through it and you're trying to get it to hurt itself yeah and so that so that later you can hurt it yes that one's clever actually that's one of my favorite ones actually that one's clever and i like the way that like one thing i think this game does a phenomenal job of is uh it gradually ratchets up not necessarily the difficulty because i don't know if i'd say this game's difficult per se but it gradually ratchets up the uh the complexity you know what i mean like the first boss is like oh it's pretty basic he swings his club at you and then you can climb up his arm you stab him in the head and he's dead and then later on it's like oh i need to climb up the environment and jump onto these guys and then it's like oh i need to use the environment to lure these guys into different areas and maybe knock like some armor off of them to be able to hit them and like it feels like basically every every couple of enemies they just like add another layer to the, like the strategy involved, and I think it's yep. really well done. Like like I don't feel like there's ever one that feels boring compared to the past one. You know what I mean? Like yeah, because it's not Mega Man. You can't go in any order. Like you have to fight them in the. I, I mean maybe you can. I've never tried because the whole map is accessible. Can you go in? A, I don't know if you could go it's in. A, I don't know if I've ever tried. So I, I mean, maybe, I have to. Maybe if you're that. trying to, maybe if you ever go back to it, uh, yeah, you might have to do that. Because once you be like, can what, I go to this boss? Because <laughs> once you've played it once, you know where they are. Like I'm yeah. just curious. Yeah, could you go right to the next? I, I I doubt it. But either way, like I never found myself being like, ah, oh, this one is like a step back compared to the last one. Like or like when you play, it, like it. Yeah, it just always they always just get a little bit more inventive as you go. <laughs> Procedurally, it would be really easy to get you to stop from doing them uh, by just making sure that uh, anything that would be open, there would be something blocking the way until you come back to the temple, you know, sure. like a, a total reset, like uh, just being like, oh, well, this there's a boulder here. And then when you go back the next time when you're supposed to, that boulder is gone. And 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 maybe that comes back to like why the world is so big. Like when you set out to go find whatever the next one you have to fight is like, just say for argument's sake, your sword is like flashing sunlight to the, to the South. Like, yeah. I, I don't know about you, but I'm like, well, then I'm sure it's fucking not going North and wasting 15 minutes of time looking for one that I'm not looking for right now. Like the world yeah. is so big that you're like, I'm going where it fucking tells me, you know, like, and especially for the PS2 era. It's a big environment. It sure is. And I assume that part of the reason they could make it so big is because it is so, so empty. You know, no disrespect yeah. to it because it works for it. But like when you don't have to put enemies and villages and NPCs and, and treasures and shit in it, I'm sure it's pretty easy to just make a giant empty overworld. Yeah, um, that, exactly, right? You're, you're saving uh, so much computer power, so much processing power by not having things yeah. that you can add. And, and, and like I've said before, it really adds to the depth of your this guy on a quest by himself. That's yeah. it. It's really and like and you don't feel like a like you're not a, a fucking a mutant or a superhero. Like I said, you have a sword and a bow and arrow, and that's it. And they don't upgrade. Right. Like you slowly get more stamina and I guess you could go on these collectibles and get like more health, but it's not like there's like an Excalibur sword hidden in the game if you go do like a side quest. There's not even quests. There's no one to talk to. Like it's very <laughs> it's 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 a really beautiful beautifully made fucking video game it's really special yeah. um i wanted to ask you because like my least favorite of the 16 colossi without ruining everything about it is either the flying hemorrhoid guy <laughs> or the fucking bird that you have to fight over the water just because getting on him is such a mud like i'm so terrified of falling off of him and it's so easy to fall off him because he's like flying through the sky and like doing like loop de loops and shit. If you're not holding grab at the wrong time, you fall and getting back up on them is just such a pain in the ass. Is there one that yeah. sticks out to you is like, I fucking hate that guy. <clears throat> um, there's one who, um, I want to say it's like outside of a castle in like a kind of like a barren wasteland area. And he shoots fireballs or fire at you. Um, it's fairly early in the game. But, like, you've got to be running away from it. But you can't run too far because you still got to hit it with your bow and arrow. Right. And you, like, you have to do all these things to kind of get it to slow down so then you can get on it. 
it probably is one of the more challenging ones because it's one that's like actively kind of trying to kill you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there, there's the, oh yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. And there's like, cause that's, oh no, isn't that the same one that you have to like, there's all those like geysers and you have to like bring them out into the overworld where all the water's shooting out from under the ground. Yeah. That's uh, the one. That guy yeah. fucking drives me crazy too. Yeah. <laughs> fucking drives me fucking crazy. Cause he just um, moves so and, goddamn slow. Fuck. And then there's the, uh, the, the serpent one in the water. Again, it's an early one. Um, but just like, I think because you've only learned so much about it yeah. and it added this completely different element, uh, where like you watch this guy for a while and he's like staying kind of near the surface and then like you're fighting him and you recognize that you're trying to kill him. And then he just starts dragging you underwater. I think that's the one I probably died at the most. Cause I will, you kind of don't take into consideration like how fast of a swimmer your guy is. Yeah. Especially once you get underneath. Right. I, and I, then you have to reset and then try to get him back up. And <laughs> Yeah. He like, he's irritating, but I also think he's like, I think he's one of the more clever bites in the game because like it's, it's a bit of an adrenaline rush when it goes from such a calm, quiet, peaceful ride on your horse. And now all of a sudden you're fighting this fucking sea serpent and you're holding <laughs> on to him and he's dragging you underwater and shit. Like, it gets your blood pumping a bit. Like I, I agree with you. It can be frustrating, but I also think he's one of the more unique, like kind of stands out boss fights in the game too. Yeah. Um, for sure. Is there, is do you have a favorite of all of them? Um, I like, really like the dog fight in the Coliseum. That one was just a fun fight because you're it. I think for all of them, it's like the most like action intensive. Yeah. Because you're, you're running, you're climbing, um the environment's getting destroyed you gotta land on other pieces of the environment because if you don't you're fucking dead yeah <laughs> right? you're not you, yeah. you're not getting you're not getting back up and it's like um one of those like running games where you gotta run for as long as you can and it just added uh, a lot more intensity yeah i know it makes for bad podcasting but i think that's my favorite one too like it's just you're like eat like if you've never played it, like just imagine like one of the two dogs from Ghostbusters, like chasing you, and you're just basically jumping from like one one like old Coliseum like wall to like a tower, running along another wall, just trying to get the fuck away from him. And it's a right. really really clever like yeah, I I think it's the most adrenaline hopping. Um, but then like once you get to, once you get to the end of that fight, it's fucking cakewalk. Yeah, ex yeah, it's the getting away from them that's hard. After that, it's a piece of cake. All right, and uh, like a lot of the destroying the environment is just trying to get that armor off him because yeah. he's uh, he's got all this stone armor on him. So yeah, it's I like a coincidental. Uh, like you're doing two things at the same time. Yeah, I, yeah, I liked him a lot. I like the the giant one where you need to like climb up the two side like he's almost in like a narrow hallway of like oh, an old yeah. Aztec type thing and you need to like climb him and like I also found it frustrating because that was the only one I had to look I was like I have no idea what the fuck I'm supposed to do and that was the one I had to look up and then I yeah, realized well, you, gotta, like, oh, you gotta get him to like step on that thing like try to squish you and you move out of the way and then the like, uh, it creates a little ramp so now you can start climbing up the wall yeah and, and then he's gotta like break some of the stuff on the wall so then you can keep climbing up yeah, and that one was just like I hadn't fought another one where I had to interact. Like I don't know if there was another one where you like you need him to do so much of the work for you. And like I just was starting to be like, what the fuck do you want me to do here? And then once I looked it up, I was like, oh, I have the right idea. I must just not be standing in the right place to like trigger what he needs to do next. And then he did it. And I was like, oh, for fuck's sakes. So that one, I think that's a really cool, clever fight. I just, it irritated me a little bit at the same time. Um, as frustrating as it was, that uh the blink one with the hemorrhoids yeah um was probably the most beautiful of yeah. fights yeah right? I agree. It, even though it's like um you know with the huge map but once you get like on top of them and you're flying around you really get that feel like you're in the air and this is a like a like a dragon kind of thing yeah and uh you realize like what he can do and can't do and the environment on the top of it is just so unique in compared to like all the rest of the bosses. Yeah. And, and even when he's like flying above you and you're like getting ready to go after him on the horse, like shoot his, his hemorrhoids. Uh, it, like it's really just kind of peaceful. Like the rest of them, like they just kind of appear, they come out of the ground and they try to kill you or they're like, you know, like they're mean, like 
this guy just seems like he's just out for like a chill flight. Like he's just like, yeah, well, like just fuck off. I'm just enjoying the sun. Like, have you have you ever watched Human Planet? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, it's, it's a BBC documentary about um, like indigenous people around the world. Okay. And um, there's one where they're in the they're doing the Arctic and um, they're what are they they're trying to get narwhal I think uh, or and they have to do they have to like as a group like really like attack this thing and knowing that they like can die but it's like kind of a peaceful but long and arduous task okay right and that's kind of what this felt like yeah like this one like, ahead of ahead, more than any of the other ones you fight this one just feels like I feel bad because I'm like this dude's not hurting anyone like he's just out here flying around like he's just enjoying the sun just kicking in his little corner here and we have to go kill like he's yeah like he's he, you're right like he's the most frustrating fight in the game for me except maybe the end boss but he's oh, also yes. beautiful. The end boss is frustrating so as fuck. all right and again we won't ruin everything but like the, the the final boss is obviously like the 16th colossus and as you would imagine he's like the biggest most powerful badass looking one of the bunch and like you have he's to, a town yeah yeah he is yeah <laughs> and you like town. you have to like with a tower you have oh. to like get to him and like getting to him is fun enough like you're dodging some fireballs and like running behind like cover and like it's classic like anyone that's played a video game has done something like the part of getting to him but then you this get to is, him and it is like a fucking three minute climb up this fucking guy and this like is the, this oh. is the fight that the controls fuck you over the most dude yeah out every out of everyone like if your angle isn't right you fucking jump off and you're like fuck the so like fuck. once you once you start climbing him like climbing the first half of him like his legs and like his lower body is no problem but then once you get to like his midsection then you start finding weak spots because like a lot of the bosses in this game their weak spots like you stab a few times you do some damage and then their weak spot moves to somewhere else and you have to keep climbing and this guy they just keep going higher up and so you need to like stab his belly and then stab his first arm and then he'll reach down with his hand to like swat you you climb up his hand jump off his shoulder onto his other hand and there's one jump Mick where you have to go <laughs> from the back of his hand onto his shoulder but you need to like arrow shoot his shoulder to get him to reach his hand up to his shoulder to jump off that is the jump that makes me so it like when you lay that jump and you're on his shoulder going up to his head to try to kill him not only like it's so it's it's, it's beautiful to see how far down it is but you're also like if i run out of stamina here and i fall and i have to do that whole fucking climb again i might throw my controller through the tv and like it's it's a really well done fight, but that guy is just so much climbing. Like he's so tall. Fuck me. There there are so many times in that fight climbing up that fucking guy that because of my positioning I would make the jump and I would fall. Ugh. So and many times. Like and like the thing is is like all the like pretty well every boss in the game like you have to climb on them and they try to shake you off. But most of the time you can tell like, oh, when I'm in jeopardy of falling and when I'm not. But like with this guy, you're standing on like, literally, if you're listening to this, like hold your arm out in front of you with your palm facing down. Now turn your arm so your palm is facing up. Now reach in and turn your palm facing down again. Like that's what he's doing. He's moving his two arms and turning his two wrists. And it's, it can be very difficult to tell like when you're on the right side of gravity where you won't fall and when you're not. And then you need to time your jumps off them perfectly. And like the fucking jump mechanic... Cause like you'll be holding it's, on to something, so bad. dude. You'll be holding on to something with like the L one button. Then you need to hold down on the analog stick to look back the other way. Then you need to like hit triangle or something to like. Ju it's just you should have them figured out by the time this boss comes around. But he'll make you second guess yourself and then trying to like aim it. It's it's a great yeah. fight, but it's, fuck, it's infuriating too. Oh. Timing, timing, and position in that is the most crucial and frustrating thing possible. Yeah. And like. Oh, just getting to him because like he's a town right uh, or like you know like he's you're running around and he's throwing fireballs at you and you gotta use the environment to stop and you're running through all these tunnels and if you don't know where the tunnels are it's like this huge exploration thing that yeah. just is consuming but but at the same time like at this point you fought 15 
other Colossus. And they've gradually gotten more difficult. Like, I'm expecting the 16th one to be a fucking behemoth. And he, and he does live up to the task. And, like, when you beat him, I got to say, you guys know, like, I'm, I'm staunchly against final boss fights because they usually just piss me off and I hate them. Like, I actually thought he was a pretty clever boss fight. He's not just a bullet sponge. He's as vulnerable as the rest. It's just trying to climb him can be tough. Um, be- it is a sad, it's a satisfying win. Dude, I was just going to say that. Like, beating him is is fucking it's like holding in a pee forever and then finally peeing it is so good and you're like it, it's a and then and then once you beat him that's it it's just you get another great cutscene to like wrap up the game and um there are many instances like where this game started to appear like infuriate me where i was getting lost in the world where the controls were fucking me around or i couldn't figure out how to fight a colossus but there was never one instance where i even thought about quitting I was just so enthralled with this video game and like all of these, like, listen for any of the time that we've been ragging on it or bringing up stuff we didn't like, I don't know about you, Mick, like we're going to score this thing in a second, but like, I recommend it. Like, you know, this- we still gotta, we, are we going to talk about how it ends? Uh, fuck. I don't. Okay. You know what? Yeah. We're, we're, we're at the end. Yeah. Because okay. it's just like how it wraps up like the, the end of this game. Like the the movie for beating all this stuff is so satisfying, yeah, because it, it fits with the the entirety of the game. Because um, it doesn't really wrap up anything. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Like it leaves a very like it could have totally. I don't. Again, like I I want to say that there's a game that's kind of like a sequel to it. I don't know if it's a direct sequel to it, but it definitely uh, leaves room for more if they wanted to. Well, if they want to go online and look up uh, how it's connected to the the guys the other games that these guys made and how it's supposed to be a prequel or something um, to them than they can, um, but they don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will just say like, without spoiling what actually happens in the end of it. Um, I, I, I'm hard pressed to think of a game that I was more satisfied with the ending of than this one. Right. Like, and it like it, it fits so well because you got like so little story throughout everything. Yeah. And and uh that's like here's what I'll do for the spoiler. You do save the girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. All right, that's, yeah, I can go with that. That's it. But right? that's like, what that's what's so beautiful about it, like you said though, is like it's such a minimalist story. Like they literally leave out like just enough breadcrumbs to get you to the end of the game, and then they're like in about five minutes everything's going to pay off and they do it so well. And you're already riding the high of fucking killing that final boss. And then you get this like incredible finale. And I just remember like finishing it. And like, I swear to like the only game off the top of my head that I remember feeling that satisfied based on like the storyline ending was uh, the last of us. Like when I, when I finished it, I would just was like, I'm, I'm, completely satisfied like i'm great that was outstanding like there was no I, no stupid endings no letdowns nothing i was so happy with it i um i gotta say yeah one day you should play portal um i i promise i will or, i get or, that or, a lot or portal I'm, I'm going or to. portal 2 it, it's 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 a a weekend game you could beat it in a weekend yeah you could do uh you can put it on your Twitch channel and watch people <laughs> watch people get uh, people watch you get mad. <laughs> and I will. It, yeah, you will. It's uh, there. But, like I'm, I will play. But it. it's the it's kind of got like the same kind of feel to the ending. Like you get accomplished, but you're like, did I did I actually do anything? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Just like if it was a movie, I'd walk out of the movie and like you know like a, a great movie can be ruined by a bad ending. And, uh, like, this is what we're like, if it was a movie, I would have walked out and I would have been like, that was fucking excellent. Like it just, yeah. it just left like um, so satisfying. Like, uh, what was that movie? Um, Denzel Washington. He's like chasing some demon that transfers through people. Um, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I haven't seen, I haven't seen anything. Okay. Well, uh, fallen. It's kind of got like that same feel of an ending as fallen where like, you're like, did this, what was this almost for nothing <laughs> yeah yeah that's but, a great way to put but, it yes oh my god what a game um yeah and i feel like we did a pretty good job reviewing it without spoiling too much i don't think we ruined yeah. anything and i know it's like some of you are probably thinking like go ahead and fucking spoil it's like a 16 year old game or whatever i get that but i also know a lot of people haven't played it 
Uh, I've seen yeah. the comments from people, and I really hope that we've convinced you to give it a shot. It's on. I, if, you, if you don't want to find the old one, it's on PS4, the remake. That's how I would recommend playing it at this point. And I, I, it's, 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 it's fucking uh, worth it. I promise. Yeah, honestly, like if you can, um, if you have, if you're like us in Edmonton with the public library, and you can print uh, borrow games to the public library fucking do it yeah absolutely <laughs> you, you beat it in a weekend um and and don't give up in the first 10 minutes if the controls like the first 10 minutes of this i was like what in the fuck i was like are the controls like is, are they broken <laughs> just stick with it because they will start to make sense and they will start they'll still irritate you at times but it's not yeah. game breaking i hate bad controls and i played through this game twice and honestly i can see myself playing through this game like once a year like i can see it working its way into that like my super mario world rotation Right, yeah, I want to well, play it you, every year. Do you uh, celebrate Winter Edemus? I don't know what that is. It's uh, from a internet comic called Control Delete. One of the main characters makes his own holiday, and it's like basically like a week or two in January, or the end of January. It's oh, okay. like just dedicated to playing video games. Oh, that sounds so, awesome. So uh, usually I'll pl try to sit down and play a game. I didn't this year. Um, but this is definitely one of those games where you could do that. Absolutely. Like, I, I fucking, like, I seriously played the PS4, then played the PS2 on, like, six months later, had no less fun, and I was like, dude, I could totally play this again. Like, it's just, and frankly, it's one of those rare games where I feel like the more you play it, the more you'd enjoy it. I think it'd almost be better this, like, I, I enjoyed it more the second time through because I had an yeah. idea of what to do, and it was like, I just want to, I want to see how fast I can do it. It was that much, it was just... I, 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 it's a work of art. Like, I don't, I can't I, think of a better way to describe it. It's a work of art, this video game. I don't know if I would go back and try and find those lizards, but no, me neither. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm sure there's some like hardcore Shadow of the Colossus fans, Johnny, that sponsored this episode, probably like, you didn't find any of the fucking lizards. I didn't even know there were lizards, but it didn't matter. <laughs> game was still fucking excellent anyway. Um, yeah. if I had to score, so okay, I guess like 16 makes sense because there's 16 Colossi. So if you were going to score this thing out of 16, uh, what would you give it? I'm going to give it a solid 14. Uh, even though there are three boss fights that just fucking annoyed me. Uh, just the rest of it, even when it was annoying me, I still loved it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm going to, you want to know what? Like I'm going, I'll give it a 15 and I got to be honest. If the controls didn't jerk you around at times, I might have given it the elusive perfect score. Like, I just think this, I was so jaw droppingly impressed with the art that like this, I, I know it's going to sound kind of cheesy and stupid, but like, I really look at like, I think video games are art period, but this, I'm like, this is, this is art. This is like that, that fucking really nice expensive bottle of wine that you just enjoy once in a while or scotch or fucking in your case, fucking mushrooms or whatever the fuck. Like, it's just like, this is like, it's just really so, really nice mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so, it's just such a, it's a, it's, it's a beautiful video game. It's, it's you to me what? must play. It's a must play video game in my opinion. You know what? It's, it's about the length of a mushroom trip. So I yeah. might, <laughs> <laughs> Oh fuck. And that's how we're going to wrap up talking about this beautiful video game is that it's about the length of a mushroom trip. Um, but it really is. It's it's beautiful. It's just if you play it, please. I'm telling everybody, must play video game. I'm doing my top 100 video games for episode uh, of all time for episode uh, 100 of Expansion Pass, and I don't know if that episode will have gone live before this one or not. I'm I'm willing to like. I'm guaranteeing this game is in the best video games I've ever played list. Like it's that good. I I don't. I love it. I love everything about it, minus the controls that fucking drive me crazy. Um, Sam, I'm Sam's done. Wonderful. Nick, so much. that was a fucking that was a good hour buddy thank you for doing this thank you we made it we fucking we did it with nothing going wrong we fucking it did it the charm. all i gotta do is say goodbye and end this recording before my computer fucking crashes or something so uh buddy th thank <laughs> you for doing buddy. this man no problem it's lots of fun
And that's going to do it for this week's episode. Miklos, thank you so much for giving me a call and talking Shadow of the Colossus. And Johnny, thank you so much for sponsoring the episode, for giving me a call to talk Shadow of the Colossus, and for kicking me in the taint and getting me to play this fucking game in the first place. Because I'll be honest, this is one of those games I don't think I would have played had I not been kicked in said taint. But I'm glad I got that kick because now I fucking love Shadow of the Colossus. I can see myself playing this game every year. I This game is so special. And if you've not played it, I'm I'm I'm... I'm borderline begging you. Give it a shot. If you've got a PS4 or a PS5 or a PS2, uh, I would recommend playing the PS4 version. It's basically identical. It's just cleaned up and a little bit smoother and everything. But either one works just great. Great fucking game. Johnny, thank you again. And anyone that is interested, you can check out Johnny's information in the description of this podcast where you also find a link to our Patreon. And if you like this show, maybe consider looking at our Patreon. The new month is the best time to sign up because you don't get charged again until the 1st of April. So you sign up right now, you drop that two bucks and you get fucking what? By the time today goes live, how many days are in March? 30 or 31? Boy, this is a bad sales pitch. Uh, There's 31. So if the day goes on the second, you have 29 days or less, depending on when you heard this, to just browse the over 200 bonus podcasts that are sitting in our archives, including Expansion Pass number 100 that goes live tomorrow, where I'll be ranking my 100 favorite video games of all time. Patreon.com slash Remember the Game. Plus, you can join our Discord and all that stuff. And 5% of our Patreon gets donated to the Stoller Children's Hospital here in Edmonton. So it's just literally the best possible thing you could spend the change in your ashtray on. Best possible thing ever. Uh, I also have a P.O. box. You can find that address at RememberTheGamePodcast.com. If you want to shoot me a letter or a postcard or something, I'll send you one back. And don't forget to check me out on the old Twitch box, twitch.tv slash member the game. Just go to twitch.tv and look for member the game, not remember, member the game. You'll see the avatar. It's a little angry Adam with his hat on backwards, getting pissed off. And uh, I'm on there two or three nights a week, just playing video games and chatting with anyone that wants to come by and hang out with me. Thank you all so much for listening to the show. Whether this was your first or your 187th, remember the game. I'm very, very grateful we're growing like a fucking weed leave us a nice review if you didn't hate it that'd be fucking really cool i'm not sure what those accomplish but i'm supposed to ask for them because that's what good patrons do or good podcasts do and uh, i'm gonna get out of here i'll be back tomorrow with expansion pass number 100 i'll be back on friday with game patch and i'll be back next week with a whole nother juicy smorgasbord of video games podcasts including remember the game number 188 which will probably be about contra unless something changes between now and next week uh, but probably contra but I, you, know, you never, never know. It's a surprise. That's part of the fun. Thanks for listening, everybody. You're all the best. I'll talk to you again soon. Cheers. Goodbye. Remember the Game is brought to you by our Patreons. I could not produce all the content that I churn out every week without all of your support. The following people have pledged at the Senior Executive Vice President level or higher at patreon.com slash remember the game. So I'd like to take a moment to fuck up a bunch of their names and thank them all personally. So a huge thank you to... Makeshift, Mallow Money, Joe Buck, Sharonic, Andre, Keegs in a Stupid Arrow Handle, James Clark, Dave McGee, DNA Gaming, Slick Rick, Doug Dorn, Charlie Medeiros, Andrew Wright, Jordan, Fraser Burns, Lil Bunny Fufu 89, Angry Ticks, Dave Thompson, No One Cares, Brandon O'Brien, aka Tin Smasher, Aaron Lawson, Matt McLean, Morgan, Zane Donovan, Mike Maloney, very cool dude, G9PSX, Raging Demon, Wolfgang Darren, Sam Wright, aka V Trigger, Andy Hudson, Chris Coplin, Matt McLean, Too Loud for the Crowd, Wolf Magic, Chowdy Loudy, Titan420, Adam Fair, Russell Aldridge, Jeff Bergeron, Captain N, Game Nomad Misi, Daniel, Tunable Power, John Woodruff, and Human Sumo, Just a Fish, Bagalazino, Noob Q, Denzalo, Holmes, Zach Shepard, Ballsack Teabagger, Chris Dickin, Matthew D'Amico, Jaja 1K1T, Clayton Robertson, Frosty Feet 492, Chris Larkin, Austin Cook, Elijah Burns, Stephen Parnell, Aaron Price, Dakabai, Ray San Juan Tongo. Wontonga, pardon me, Zach Coiner, DBXJ, Jameer Williams, Steve Dalk, Sid's Good Leg, Trav H, Nicholas Chaffee, David Marcus, Phil Lencher, Illegal Amigo 69, Ruben Elizald, Eric James, Laces Out, Dan C. Spin, Thomas Smith, Ian Keg, Nicola, Munch Makuchi, DB Muppet, Leroy Westrich, Dark Squall, Jerry Mulis, Paul Burke, Evolva, Sean Ramos, Stud Still Smash, Mojo, The Helper Monkey, Solid Rake, Brant Huet, Gabriel Deandria, that fucks me every time. And Decoy Man, Decoy Man. God, I suck at this. Uh, thank you all so much for the support. You guys are the best. And I will talk to you on the next podcast. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.